Hello folks, give me one second. We're getting everything done up here. And we're gonna go live. Give me one minute. Alright, there we go. So hello, I think we got the commands fixed tonight for the animation stuff. I'm pretty sure. Hey Hal Razor, how you doing, buddy? One thing here, look at my phone. There it is. Yep. How you doing, buddy? Good to hear, man. Yeah, I'm doing good too. Had a nice chill day. We had a family day yesterday. We went riding roller coasters and all that stuff. And then today we just we slept in late because we were out real late last night. Had a really good night, but we were out late. And then tonight we just did some uh, chilling. We just chilled, or the whole day really. We just kind of relaxed, took it easy, worked on a couple things. Um, didn't do anything crazy. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. All right. So I have no idea what we're going to draw tonight. Um, hadn't really put much thought into it. Just been a long sort of day. So um, let's start with just some basic warm-up. We'll see how it goes. And then we may decide to turn it into a picture. We may not. Um, who knows? But we'll just kind of start. Um, so let's start with basic round. I think we'll... Should we do characters or do we want to do scene warm-ups, Hellraiser? You pick. What do you think? Want to do like some flat character stuff or should we do some scenery? I'm good either way. Oh, and by the way, we are running... We are running um, character. Okay, we'll do a character. We are running for OBS, so we should be getting FTL on Mixer side. And we should be... I fixed the keyframe stuff over on the DLive side. And then I believe the commands for some of the animations are now working properly. Well, they should be. So that's the hope. Uh, we'll find out. All right, so we'll do some random flat character stuff. We'll just kind of warm up with it. See how it sort of goes. Let's do let's do one without an outline. Let and then let's try to recreate it with an outline. That way we can kind of see like two different takes on it. Maybe that might be fun. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times we only see like the one side of it. So let's or let's just do it with an outline. Why not? Um. Start with that dark sort of grayish black, yeah. Let's do it like this. And then what we'll do doing like an ear. Cause I am trying to do more like outline stuff as well, you know? Not just all um not just all like flat stuff, because I really do think I wanna try and do some uh, comic book stuff or like web comic stuff, but if I do web comic stuff, I really want it to be sort of I, I've got to pick a style I've got to pick a style and I got to nail it down because I've got a lot of ideas up here But it's like I'm having a hard time figuring out What do I want it to look like and and how do I want it to function? You know what I mean? And that's something that I really need to I Really need to get nailed down and I need to start working on it like on a regular serious basis just kind of Trying to figure it. So, like this. And what we'll do is. Wrong. Do you read any webcomic stuff, Howard? Do you partake in any of that? Like, I've been asking around, like, different people, and it seems like it's sort of a. I don't want to say a younger generation thing, but it seems like it, it really. It, it works well hand in hand with folks that are in younger audiences, like you know, early 20s into mid 20s, you know, early 30s kinds of stuff. It seems like they read a lot of uh, different web comics and things like that, from what I can tell. I could be wrong, but from what I'm reading, that seems to be sort of the case, so. Let's do, um. Looking at something here. You never really met. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is like, so when I get looking online, there's like a whole lot of information about, you know, web comics and, and where to post them and what what demographics to shoot for and things like that. But it's one of those things like I've never really partaken in it much myself either. So it's one of those. I'm trying to find something that will allow me to do regular content, right? That makes sense. Like something that like, let's say I choose twice a month. You know what I mean? I'm trying to find something that's going to give me regular content to build like a product. And the only thing I can really think of is like a webcomic or 
um, or something like that that sort of um, gives me a schedule or something to upload regularly with like a set set style, set characters, something. I mean, I guess I could also look at YouTube and do like some sort of a series or something. Yeah, and I don't really want to go like, I don't really want to go like hardcore. I don't want to go into like, you know, the Walking Dead theme, if you will, where it's just really adult. Like, I'd like to straddle a line between like what is like teen to mid-teen somewhere in there so that if there was violence, it would be sort of suggested violence, but it wouldn't be like, like straight out like gore. You know what I mean? It would just be like if someone were to get killed, for example, it would be sort of suggested violence or it would be sort of the aftermath. It wouldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah, in between, like sort of straddle that line. I don't want to go like full on like uh, Game of Thrones, Walking Dead. Yeah, none of, that. none of that. I want something that people would enjoy regardless, you know, but at the same time, it'd be something that, um, would be enjoyable to read. You know what I mean? That, that's kind of the goal. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Hey, Bayou. How you doing? First time here. Well, welcome. Um, if this is your first time here, I, my name's Jeremiah. I do uh, vector art, pixel art. We do animation, things like that. If you have any questions for me, uh, the, the techniques, softwares, anything like that, feel free to let me know. Um, we normally do creative streams. And we have sort of a teachy stream where we help people learn. So if I can help you in any way, just uh, feel free to ask. Otherwise, thanks for being here. And um, yeah, thank you. We're just getting started. We're kind of doing a warm-up drawing. By we haven't really started yet. We're just sort of we're just sort of playing around right now. We're, we're talking more than anything. I was actually talking. Oh, and we are restreaming. By you, we're restreaming on uh, Mixer. Uh, D Live and YouTube currently, so you're gonna see down in chat there. You'll see chat coming from Mixer and, and different things like that as well. But uh, we were just sort of discussing like web comics and comics and things like that in general, because I'm sort of beginning to work on ideas for what I would want to do for like a potential web comic or something like that, and haven't really fleshed out any details yet. Just sort of still playing with it. But yeah, Hellraiser, that, that's, a, that's precisely what I'm thinking. If I do this, I want it to be sort of like in that teen-ish category where it's sort of soft. I don't, I don't want to go like full-on hardcore violence or anything. Because it doesn't really cater to the, the style that I, that I do. Not that I have a problem with it, but not exactly what I'm looking to create. Um, I'm just playing around here. Let's see what this does. So you could definitely make a shape with that. And then I thought about why don't we play around with let's just make let's just make a random character real fast and then we'll sort of discuss it and kind of see what everybody's thinking about it. And because like that robot we did the other night, what did we call that? And I made the comment we should not have called it that, but I think we call it robot dude. Yeah, we did. Okay, so you can sort of see this style, and this is kind of the style that I'm leaning toward when it comes to um what i want to be doing uh in terms of for like a web comic or something like that so okay let's go with three point i think four is a little bit much we'll bring this down here we'll copy this over here and uh by you you'll see a little uh, slideshow over here to the right i believe is that way and um that sort of showcases some of my work and so you can get a good look at the styles and the things that we do here let's do now for the eyes yeah right Hellraiser exactly yeah cuz I mean you know I don't want to completely undermine the work that I do you know all the time which is generally pretty clean in terms of, of functionality all right let's do and I think what we might actually do here coming up soon on some of the streams is I have a couple ideas for a webcomic or that style of, of, of product. And we may do some character development live on stream so everyone can sort of see how that works out. Um, and I might get some input from you guys and let you sort of help with the, the overall process and kind of figure out, you know, how we want to move forward with it. Need I use Photoshop and Illustrator sometimes, but I haven't made characters. Yeah, so um, we, I use Affinity products by you. So I use Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, um, but I do a lot of character development. I do scene development. There's a lot of different um, things that I sort of do. 
but yeah, for nine times out of ten, we're doing character stuff. Here lately, we've been doing some scene stuff as well, though. Turn that into a baby, yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. We're gonna roll oh, um, this over here. We got a host. Welcome hey, everyone. Bart, thank you for that host. How are you doing? Good to see you. I am well. How are you? I am well. We're just sitting here talking, conversing about like ideas and things that I want to do and just messing around. Doing good. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I am glad to hear that. We're sort of continuing the conversation from the other night about like. I've really, I did a lot of brainstorming, even though we were having, like, family days yesterday. I was really doing some brainstorming on, like, um, sort of some ideas for what I want to, I want to start moving toward, um, for, like, a potential webcomic or a web series. It's Osmith. How are you? Good to see you guys. Thank you for coming in. I do appreciate it. Um, we're sort of discussing, like, I really am thinking about trying to see if I can finish, like, a webcomic or something to sort of focus my attention into um and because so here here's where i'm here's where i'm at here's where i'm at is i'm trying to figure out two things here i'm trying to figure out something that will allow me to get on some sort of a schedule and so i'm thinking either like a web comic or some sort of like an i think i could do a web comic and i could stick to that easier than trying to do like an oh, animated um, series you know what i'm saying host. Welcome, oh, thank you for the host i appreciate that Rather than like an animation or something, right? Because an animation obviously is going to take more work and time. So I'm trying to come up with something that I think I can stick to maybe a couple times a month. Something that would sort of give me a way to channel some of my ability and energy. Um, and it's just one of those like I'm, I'm sort of messing around with different styles and stuff. Just kind of playing around with like ideas on what we can kind of move toward if I was going to do it. Let's see here. And just real quick, folks, I've got uh, my next two weeks, I'm going to be working a heck of a lot of overtime at work. So I'm going to be really busy. I will still be streaming. There may be a couple days I miss, or there may be a couple changes to the schedule, but I will let you guys know. It's best in the Discord. That way you're, you're aware of what's going on. But um, I've got some really big projects coming up, and um, they're going to absorb a lot of my time. So. It will definitely affect my stream schedule a bit, unfortunately. But, like I said, I will try to keep everyone updated. Okay, go. That up, that would work right there. And we're just playing around here. This is more of a sketch, like normal. I'm not really doing anything too crazy here just sort, sort of warming up because I asked uh, Hellraiser what we wanted to warm up with and kind of decided character let's put some hair on this thing or maybe like a hat I don't know we'll do something cute we're just just a warm up anyways we'll just do a nice little smile I'm here oh, very good we'll go with a darker color red Fill it in. Yeah, we'll just do a nice little face here real quick. Maybe this will lead into something, or it'll, it'll get me inspired to work on something else. Or something in this style. Okay, right, cool. And we'll do some little teeth here. And basically, we'll just cut, paste. And we'll go with a eh, white. Now, thing is with those, that stroke's awfully big, so we'll jump down to two and sort of center them in there. All right, cool. So we got a little head shape here we'll group it um give him a little neck and we're going with this outline style which again is not typical for me but it is something i'm trying to get a little more comfortable with and we'll go back to three for the neck i should have just copied the uh the face there taking the stroke all right cool one little face now let's jump over to a flat variation of something 
And I like to do these, sometimes I do these off camera before I ever go live. Um, just sort of as a, a mental primer to kind of get going. Uh, but I think it's fun to do it on screen or, you know, on stream so you guys can sort of see the process a little bit. You guys let me know, but I think it's pretty cool. Let's go here. Copy will paste. And let's go with like a, like a red or like an orange, maybe. Chop this. Because I honestly have no idea what we're going to be drawing tonight. I um, didn't really come into this with any ideas. <laughs> It was a long day, so I sort of figured we'd just go live and see how it feels. Okay. Do a little... Let's do a different shape mount here. What would it look like if we... I mean, I know we could cut it at an angle. We could also turn this at an angle. That's going to be more like a frown, right? And then we could do skin tone or... We could go, um, yeah, we could do this and then sort of copy it in again if we wanted to. I don't know if I want to keep the skin tone or not, but we'll share the same colors as this. Yeah, we'll go here. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. There's some days, I tell you. I need to incorporate more like game streams into the uh, into the into the stream sometimes because it's one of those things where I feel like sometimes it'd be nice to just zone out on a game, you know, rather than the the mental thought that goes into trying to be creative and sort of the focus on it, we got it you know, because it can be it can be you know <laughs> when you're really trying to get the brain going, you know what I mean? We're gonna. Hi, you. Thank you for following D-Live. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. No, I don't want to do eyes like that. Let's do eyes like this. And you guys will see, this is a very common thing for me. Like, you'll see pretty occasionally on social media. I'll upload little things like this. And they're sort of just like... These are sort of my sketches, the way that I sketch. And you'll see this pretty routinely. And sometimes I'll upload them, sometimes I won't. Depends on the quality or what I like about it or don't like or whatever. But we could do like a color separation here. Oh, and I started working on a couple YouTube videos today as well, guys. I do have uh, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. If anyone's interested in following me there. My YouTube, I do tutorials. I do uh, tutorials on vector art. Um, flat design art, I do tutorials on like video editing, things like that as well. So if anyone is curious about that, I'll post the uh, social link. That should do it, right? Yeah. Guess I need to remember my own commands, huh? I like this mouse. It's sort of a, a bit of a different variation here. And what we'll do is we'll post this inside. We'll go darker, like sort of the back the throat if you will like right there yeah that's kind of cool yeah right weird water bottle how's everybody's day pretty good oh and osmith i saw the uh the patreon I, i'm pretty sure that was you thank you so much for that and i was gonna actually gonna ask you like um i need i need some ideas for like what would make patreon attractive for people do you guys have any suggestions on that like what would be a good way to it's so hard to come up with like rewards for patreon you know it's like you think about it and it's like i i want to give people something i didn't know if like people would want custom stuff for patreon only like, I could do, you know, like, one monthly art, like, maybe a boat, and do, like, Patreon-only sort of things, or, I, I don't know, like, it's so hard to come up with a really good idea for what to give people. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. I think we might just do this for a bit. Maybe we'll just do some random sketches. And, of course, you can see the difference. You wouldn't get all, yeah, and that's the thing, is, like, I don't... I don't know. I'm always looking for ways to make things better. But let's test the water here. 
Let's take this phase. Here's what we'll do. I get an idea. We'll do flat, true flat, and then we'll do like an outline version of each one of these faces. Why not? Let's let's see how, how what we can do with this. This might be kind of fun. So we'll jump down to two. That's what I was thinking. Like, what if I offered, like, a monthly... This drawing is specific to Patreon-only people kind of thing. Or, you know... I've got to... Like everything, man. You never really stop thinking about how to... How to make things right. You know, and how to make things good. <laughs> See, that's where that's going to get loopy right there. If I do outline style. So, for this, I would have to go a little smaller and center it more like this. Get rid of this here and give this a two to make sure that it works oh, um, we got a host welcome everyone it's a here would probably be the best way to do this wait a minute thank you for the host how are you good to see you i think we'll go here and then we'll just kind of look at the differences between the two, and maybe this will help just sort of build things up, right? Okay, still recovering? I saw on uh, social that you were in the hospital. Is that right? Let's break this. I wondered why you hadn't been around as much. You doing all right? Like, is everything on the up and up, or...? Because I noticed you hadn't been streaming as much. I noticed that when you did, it was mainly some games. Everything's looking better? Wow. I hope you're doing all right. That sucks. Sorry to hear that. Hospitals are never a good thing, and I work at one. Been very weak. Yeah. That'll... That'll take it out of you. Well, thank you for the host. It is, it is very much appreciated. Thank you. Hope you're feeling better. And, well, as good as you can be. We're just kind of goofing off tonight. We're not really doing a whole lot of anything crazy. Um, I'm sort of exploring some differences in styles uh, because I'm trying to. I'm trying to look at. I've been. I've been sort of talking a lot in in chat with chat. Like I want to find something to sort of focus my focus my art into, right? Like a web comic or or something. You know what I mean? Like. It's not, I love streaming and I love making random stuff, but like, I really want to play around with like, what can I do with it? You know what I mean? Like, more than just making pictures, if you will. You know? I really need to just sit down and, 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 and shut up and do it. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. It's, it's a little different than some other folks, but I love it. So right now we're just kind of exploring what the the flat versus the outline would look like so we can kind of get some variations just to see what I could mess with because I started laying out like a little like a little comic just to see what the heck I can do with this um, and the other day we made this little robot thing and this is more it's vector but you know it's um kind of going Yeah, yeah, the flat, yeah. And see, that's where I struggle, because I'm kind of stuck between them, right? Like, there's things I really like about both of them. There's things I love about flat, but then I I love going into the outline stuff sometimes, you know? It's like, it, it, it's, it's one of those, it's like a mixture. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then lately I've been doing stuff like this. I don't know if you've seen some of this, but I've been getting into, like, making scenery stuff. And I've been going, like, really, really over the top with, like, color usage and stuff. Just really trying to explore, like, uh, just scenes. Because scenes, it's something I've never really done. You know what I mean? Um, and it, it's one of those, I'm really trying to, like, figure it out and do it in my style. Um, see what I can do. Well, thank you. Did you finish the castle? Are you talking about the one part with the here? Um, this one? With the tree? I have not. Actually, doesn't load much at the hospital. Have you been like staying at the hospital, or are you just going for treatment? Oh, jeez, I don't envy you there. 
I work for a hospital, and, and, I, and I don't enjoy going there when I have to work. My wife, my wife a couple years ago, she was in the hospital for almost a month, and um, that was no fun because, of course, I was home with my daughter, and we had to get through that, and we did, but uh, yeah, that, it, it can be a real challenge. Now, that's as far as we've gotten with it, Bart. Sometimes, I mean, we will finish it, I promise. There's days where I almost, like, lose a little bit of inspiration. And you sort of just got to kind of put it on the back burner until it, it kicks on you again. Because it's, I'm struggling with what I want to do here. And I feel like I'm trying to mix too many elements on the top of this. So I feel like I need to... I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like my brain's struggling to wrap my head around it. <laughs> but... That happens sometimes, so that's normal. That is normal for me, at least. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. It's... Sometimes it's like you look at something long enough. I guess it's like anything, right? When you look at something long enough, sometimes you just sort of get like, ugh. You know what I mean? It starts to sort of wear off on you a little bit, if you know what I mean. It's Especially if you're doing art. It's, I, I, it, maybe it's a hard thing to explain, but it can definitely start to... Maybe a bird on the tree. Yeah, we could. Well, maybe we'll jump in it after this. Maybe we'll warm up with this and then we'll do it. Have you been drawing at the hospital, Queen? Or are you just taking it easy, easy? Like, just chilling. I didn't know if you had, like, an iPad or something you could actually go and do that with. Let's open... Let me open something here real quick, guys. Maybe they weren't here. Were they last year? Yeah, here we go. I'll pull this up. So here's a real good example of the, the things that I'll do with flat design sometimes, right? Like I'll just screw around and I'll start making random faces and stuff. And this is generally when I practice. It's just me sketching out like different ideas, like this little dude here, like this little whatever the heck this would be. And then, of course, like a little kid here and sort of a dapper looking fella with a, with a cigar. And then these popsicles sort of spawn from this head shape here, as you can see. If we look at these two, because I made this head note to me, and it looks like a lot, a lot like a popsicle. So <laughs> we copied it down here, and then we did like one with a bite out of it, and then we did, you know, this one over here where he's sort of melting and stuff like that. It can be fun. And then of course we did this sort of messing around with like expressions, just trying to see. And again, this is sort of my sketching. This is the way I kind of sketch, just to, to get the brain going and figure out what I'm doing and that's kind of what this is just playing around let's, let's do like a little um let me hold on a second let me move this over here give me one sec folks let's do like a little scenery real quick let's start one and then what we'll do is we'll open up that other one as well, Bart, and we'll play around with it while we work on some other stuff. And we'll just we'll just kind of go back and forth, see what we come up with. But yeah, if anybody out there has any questions for me, be sure to let me know. <clears throat> All right, let's. You know what might help with this one, Bart? Let's put some like fog in here. Let's let's put some clouds and stuff. Let's let's do something with it. Let's do something really in the foreground, and then we'll do some stuff sort of in the background as well. Go here like this. Let's go. Oh, and on uh, Mondays, for any new folks here, we do stream Mondays throughout the day um, because I don't work Mondays. At least this Monday. Next Monday I will be working. But um, usually on Mondays I don't work. So I will be streaming tomorrow. That's the plan as of now unless something comes up. go here we'll go 20 percent go here and then we're not going to copy this i think what we'll do is we'll bring this one up toward the front and we could also i thought about i want to see what you guys think about this what if we move this all the way to the front we make it a lot bigger like this and then watch this let's get rid of the shading on it and if we pull it here, 
I'm going to show you what we can kind of do to see what you guys think of this. What if we pull it in the forefront? Get rid of these. And we'll kind of pull this one up and then watch. What if we take it and we give it a Gaussian Blur? Color here. We'll give it a Gaussian Blur, let's say one. Since it's in the foreground. I've done this before, which sort of helps sell that front perspective. I don't know, let's look at it. Maybe the coloring is wrong. It is, for sure. Maybe too big. More like. Oh, um, we got a host. Welcome, Welcome. everyone. Oh, dude, thank you for the host. How are you? Give me one sec, folks. I gotta grab one thing. Sorry about that. I had to grab something real quick. For my wife. Hey, thank you for the notes, Sunday. How are you doing? I'm just playing around here. We may or may not leave these in. I don't know yet. See how you can. And, and feedback welcome, guys. Like, feel free to chime in. You won't hurt my feelings. down um do these here yeah kind of drop it in there i don't like the way that looks so, i kind of like it um i think the colors might need to be a little different but i like the the gauge and blur effect in the front because it kind of helps obviously give that like they're close up to the camera or to the what we're looking at the display i think we'll work on this one for a bit we'll finish it i know i've been teasing bart with it forever which is not a nice thing to do we'll force the inspiration and we'll see how it goes Here. I think I want to lower this one. Yeah. That's... And you can see I'm just sort of moving these around until I'm happy with the overall placement. But I like that because that sort of looks, it's sort of bringing the front perspective out a little bit. But I do like it. So I think we'll just kind of go there with it and then we'll see what's up. Okay. Now, what we'll do here. Grab this. Oh, I got something on Discord. Um, do one more of these. I think we'll come in higher. Oh, we'll come in, I'd say, right about here. And we'll actually go here, but even slightly lighter. But you'll see I'm stepping those colors. Oh, the stars, yes. Right in front of that. All right? That's pretty cool. But the problem I've got now is this is awfully similar. You can see how close the colors are to that pillar, right? So I think what I would do is actually take the saturation out a bit more. Maybe go. That's better. Much better. Start here. We'll run this down like this. Yes. That'll work. Hey there, how are you? Thank you for that host. That is much appreciated.
I am doing well. How would you? How are you doing? We're gonna go behind. Go back one. Yep. I like that. And we'll go all the way to the back. And we'll go forward one. Perfect. No, you're good. It's good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, we're just we're kind of messing around with this. This is the drawing that we we've, we've been working on for a while. I don't know if you've seen this one or not, but sort of trying to. Get this going. Hey, John, how are you, buddy? Good to see you over there on YouTube. <clears throat> For those that are curious, we are streaming currently on Mixer, DLive, and YouTube. So, I wonder if we should play around with some gradients, and maybe that would sort of fill out a little bit of the what I'm looking for here. I don't know. Let's lower this. We'll lower it a bit. Yeah, we'll lower this whole thing out. We'll just go right there. I like the way that looks. Instead of trying to go... Yeah, that's better. Instead of trying to lap in front of that one, I like the way that looks better. Let's go to the front. Grab this and this, and this, and we'll just move them up. Because if we move this mountain where we're gonna move it, you're not gonna see these. And I like that better. Nice. Okay, so that sort of highlights right there on that side of it. Now, what we're gonna do is I think we're gonna lighten this up a bit. Not much. I'd say right about there. Now, I sort of want to, I want to try something, so let, let's see what this looks like. Just woke up, oh right on, I slept in today, I never, ever, ever sleep in late, but after yesterday being out with the family all day, we um, we didn't get home till like super, super late last night, and so um, we, we the whole house slept in till like, I want to say it was 11 or something, like it was late. We, we slept right through breakfast because my daughter was so confused. She woke up and she was like, let's make breakfast. And I was like, honey, we, breakfast is gone. We slept. <laughs> and she was just like, what? <laughs> she was confused. No work today. Oh, nice. Was it like a day off, holiday, or what's up? and this needs to be a little lighter for like that yes i like that better the holiday very nice well that's awesome what are you gonna do you're gonna do some drawing you're gonna relax what's on your agenda or are you just gonna i know what i do on days like that i, I don't do anything i just chill i usually draw more than anything but you know what i mean Okay, let's start on the details for the rocks coming in because I feel like that's gonna help sort of create the look that I'm going for, I think. Or we can do this. I know exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna test for it. We're gonna make basically a duplicate of that entire artwork. I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna play around with the gradient. I don't normally do them, but I think we're gonna see how the pictures. What it does to them? Does it make them very like? What are we looking at? Let, let's do it. Let's do it. Instead of sitting here trying to do this hand shade, let's take all of the, the shading out, which it is. Now let's play around with some some gradients. And what we'll do is we'll go we'll go light dark down. Last night, what happened? Was it just technical issues, or was it just what was the problem?
but try something like this. Amazing how many shapes you have hidden in different layers. It really is, because it's funny. Like, just that lantern alone. You remember when we made the lantern? Not with, like, just how much is actually going on there. Even though it's just one little object. Like, if you if you actually deep dive into that lantern and you look at this, and you begin to see just what's actually going on there, how many shapes are. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. A lot of people, they never... They never really... People don't get it. Like, yeah, there's, a, there's quite a bit that goes into it. Ah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, here's the thing is, the thing with streaming is, it is super fun to do. But at the same time, it can be challenging. It can be, uh, it can be rough on you because, you know, as much as you want to share with people and as much as you want to help people with different things, it can be, yeah. The internet's kind of unstable, yeah. And see, that that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a huge problem if you're trying to stream. I can tell you right now. If you truly want to make an attempt at streaming, you're going to have to... That, unfortunately, is going to have to be something that becomes a, a priority or you try to somehow replace if you can. Because bad internet is not going to be good for streaming. It just isn't. <laughs> I mean, there's just no way around it. Let's go like this. I want to try something. Is that paste style? It is. But then this should have a gradient. It does. Okay. Let's move this up. You guys let me know what you think about the gradients. I sort of like the hard edges, but I figured we'd try it. So let's copy this and let's go paste style here. I know that we're going to have to move some of these colors around, but I just wanted to sort of play around with it a bit. This needs to be darker for sure. Something like that, I'd say. And then this needs to be yeah, something right about there. Yeah, because I can tell you right now, um, and like, there's no way I would try to stream if I didn't have good internet. Because... Just, it's tough. It really is tough. All right, let's let's reboot this. I don't like the way that went. But let's reboot it real quick. Let's try again. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, just a, a total reset. Because sometimes it just doesn't look right the first time, and that's fine. Okay. Let's take this color, and we'll come up more. If we want this darker, way darker. I'd say right about there. Let's take this top color. And you can see what this does, right? Like this slider essentially changes the angle or direction of what is going to become the gradient. So I think what we'll do is we'll come right about here and we'll just go darker with it. I don't know how dark. I think, honestly, right about there. Now what I'm curious of, if I take this and I paste it here, is it too dark or can you still see the separation of what it should be? That's where I need y'all to sort of let me know, I guess, what you think of that. Edit the style. It's a different way to do it, right? Like, it does, it's not necessarily better. It's just a different way to showcase the image. So this is more of a flat style, and you can see this is more of a gradient style here. And then of course we'd do the same thing with the rocks here. So we would take this, we would gradient up, we'd flip that, and then what we do is we'd probably go a little darker here, we'd go to the top, and we'd go a little darker even yet, you see? So something more like this, I would say. And then we would copy, take this, paste the style. We'll do a gradient version of it, and then we'll um, we'll compare the two and see what we think. And again, I don't normally do gradients. I'm just playing with the idea. So, bear with me. Edit. Paste style. Control-Shift-V. 
Why does it do that like that? I don't like the way it does that. See, it does it there as well. Edit, paste that. What is this? Is it doing like a really weird? Okay, go back here. Here. Nope. I'm not liking the gradient. I'm just not liking the gradients. I just don't think it's my style. Much as I want to, it just. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's just the colors that are throwing me off? Yeah, see, I'm the same way. I, I, So, this is the way I've explained it to somebody before. I'll show you real quick. The reason I don't like gradients is... Okay, so here, here, I'll give you a really good example. Let's make this ball purple, okay? Let's take the same ball and let's shade it with a gradient. Alright? And then we'll flip the gradient. Now... <clears throat> in a shape like this, if you're doing something simple, it doesn't look bad. But at the same time, I I don't know. I when it gets into doing like more complex shapes, I think using a gradient can be a little sloppy. This is this again is my opinion. I'm not saying people that use them are sloppy. It's just for me, it's just a different look. And I don't know if it's just my inexperience using them, or if it's something that I need more practice with. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, is it this shape is so organic that the gradient doesn't look right? You know? Now, see, I like the way it looks on this thing, but I don't like the way it looks on this. And I can't, for the life of me, tell me, get my brain to tell me why. But I'm liking the look of this better, so I think we'll just go with this, and I think we'll do our normal routine. Yep. Yeah, it's, it can be real tough. What do you think of these in the front? Do you like these with the blur on them? Sort of a foreground blurring effect. Do you like that? Or gradient is okay for me, like Gradient Lab. Shading is weird. And see, I see people that do characters. I see people that do whole characters with gradients, and that makes my head hurt. It's like they'll come and they'll make a head, and they'll go like this, and they'll shade it like this, right? And I know it's going more orange, but I'm just going to give you an example. And then they'll do like a neck and they'll do the same gradient in it and i just i, I don't know I, I struggle with that like i that doesn't work for me like <laughs> yeah like to me it looks bottled but people do it all the time and maybe that's just their style, you know? Well, let's do this. Let's group these boys up here. We'll leave them there, okay? We'll resize them a bit. We'll just play around with them. We'll, we'll, we'll see if these grow on us. If they don't, we'll get rid of them. And again, I'm not being objective of anyone's art in particular. It's just, for me, gradients have always been this weird... Like, I really spent a lot of time learning gradients. And I just, for whatever reason, I just... Don't like them. Yeah, like I like the cleanness of, of like I enjoy this this look, where you can take this and then do a hard edge line. You know, I appreciate this more. I like the way that look. I like the cleanness of it. You know what I mean? I just for whatever reason, it makes sense to me. 
as opposed to if we take this same circle and then we, we give it a gradient doing the same shape. I don't know. But, you know, they're different styles. And, and it's not saying one's right about the other. It's just different styles. <laughs> right, so let's do this. Yeah. Me and my daughter were playing that uh, drop mix game again. We're going to stream it again soon, I think. Probably sometime this week, I think, we'll, we'll probably stream it again soon. Me and her just goofing off with it. And when we do those streams, they'll, they'll be sort of short, just fun little streams. They won't be anything too serious. It's just going to be us goofing off. But, um, yeah, it's pretty good fun. Me and her have fun with it. Just playing around. Oh, really? A country, a rock, and a pop. See, I haven't bought really any of the packs. I bought I bought the base game. It came with 60 cards. And I'm like, okay, I'm good with that. You know what I mean? I'm going to let that ride. Because for right now, I'm waiting until I see some really good deals on some of this stuff. Because I, I don't want to I don't want to go... I mean, you can obviously spend a lot of money on it. And that's not really what I'm looking to do right now. You know, for me, it's more about just the fun of it. The occasional fun of it. Okay. Yeah, no rush. If you do, great. If not, I understand. For me, like I said, it's just for the fun of it. It's really for me and my daughter to just goof around with. She's having fun with it, and I'm having fun with it. That's what it is. Would I have spent, you know, more than what I did on it? No. Probably not. You know? I mean, if you ask me, like, I was talking to somebody about it the other day, and they were saying, oh, you know, it wasn't advertised well, and this, that, and the other, and while I agree it wasn't, because I never knew the product existed, I personally think one of the biggest things that hurt it was probably, it seems like everything was super expensive for it. So, first you had the $100 entry for just the, the, the unit, right? And then the card packs weren't cheap. I mean, the card packs were, what, you know, 30, 15, 20, 30 dollars a piece. That, that's not, that's not small potatoes. I mean, for anybody that's looking to get into it and do it, that's quite a bit of money. I mean, that's, you know, if, and I get they were trying to do like a, a Magic the Gathering, you know, with music instead of like, you know, fantasy based stuff. And I get it. And that's cool. And I think the idea is great. I think the price is probably what really derailed it. Because you, you, you took it from a game and a hobby to something that's more like collector at that point. And a lot of people just aren't going to throw that kind of money at it. Nah, especially at kids. Trying to get their, convince their parents to do that? No. <laughs> but if you ask me, I think that's probably what kind of did it in. Do another here, and we'll go like this. Perfect. You're right on that. You're right. Okay. Here's what I want to do. I want to try something. I don't know what this is going to look like. I'm afraid it's going to look bad, but I still want to try it. Oh. Let's go here. Slide this color scale back a bit. Yeah, that doesn't look terrible, actually. It kind of gives it a little bit of a depth without having to do any shading. I actually kind of like that, I think. Or at least I like it enough to let it sit there for a while and think about it, which is more than I thought when I was making it, because I wasn't really sure when I saw it at first, but yeah, yeah, we'll go like this. We'll just keep modifying some of these shapes out. We'll modify this shape out, this shape in, perfect. 
Okay, yeah. You know what, actually, is I'll make it the same color as this. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. Okay. So we can do that to sort of create depth. What I need to figure out how to do is how do I use that same... Okay, here's what we'll do then. I know I'm, I'm babbling, but I, it is with a purpose, I do promise. Let's go here. Yeah, I like that. And then we'll go here, we'll grab this color over here. All right, cool. You know, that, I feel like it'd be a lower cut, sort of in here. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Yep, good. So how do I do this same effect on the front? That's where I'm struggling. That's where I think I'm struggling with this one, is I want to sort of, all right, let's try it. We're all about learning here. If it's terrible, we'll, We'll just redo it. So it would be lighter then, right? Yeah, it would be. And it would be directly in front of this. It would be sort of like that. It would sort of, okay, yeah, I can see it. I don't like this. I feel like that would be a little more pointed or at least poignant there, okay? Okay. Yeah, because now it almost has a, like a chiseled, like a coming out effect, okay. And then we'll just kind of do the same thing here, I guess. So, I gotta be careful how I do this. Well, I'd actually, together, which isn't terrible. I was looking for a bit more separation though, so maybe more like this, yeah, yeah. Let's go like this, okay. Perfect. Uh, let's get some different music going. I don't really like... I want something a little more... Let's go with synth. You guys let me know if the music's too low, please. I've been making some adjustments to like the music and the audio and stuff, so... Okay. See, I don't... So it could essentially be about the same color as this, right? And this could be about the same color. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to sort of create that detailing. And then you could also do like little small detailing like this. I'm not... And maybe you could sort of make that look like an edge up there. I don't know. Let's try it. But again, I mean, worst case scenario, you delete it. It's... it's all practice at this point. Practice what you preach, right? That's what I tell people all the time. It's like, just draw. Don't worry about it. Make stuff and see what happens. That one I don't like. I can tell you that right now. I don't mind these. This is... Sort of has the look that I'm... What about here with some more separation? Maybe it'd be more like this. Okay, there. Perfect. I don't know, I can't tell if that's getting too three-dimensional. My eyes, for whatever reason, the picture is just. All right, let's let's work on the lighting. We'll do a mask. That's exactly what we'll do. Let's go like this. We're gonna go to a green. We're gonna go. with a spherical gradient. 
go with, what is it, Conical? No, Bitmap, no, 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 Bitmap. We have to test that out, what does that mean? Radial, okay, we'll go like this. And what we'll do is the colors around the outer edge, I think we can just reduce the opacity of that. Yeah, we can. But we can go down to like, eh. Let's try it this way. I don't think I'm gonna like it this way, but we're not gonna know until we do it. Then we'll do 30, right? Then what we can do is we can sort of put this in a mask. So what we'll do is we'll go here with it, and then we'll just make it bigger. So it sort of looks like it's the center of the, the lamp, right about there. Now, okay, well that's got a good look to it. But then what we'll do is you're obviously not going to see this light on this back rock, right? You're just not. So what we'll do, yep, we'll go a little bigger. Got a good idea how we can make this work. This might actually look like really good lighting. So we'll go here and we'll go back to let's go to 40 percent and no 35 okay good okay. all right now here we go let's grab this and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mask uh we're probably hey I've gotta try something I'm trying to make this look like a natural light, but I want to do it in a way that really blends well to the picture. So we're going to try to mask this rather than the way we were doing it, which was more like a hard light. So you'll see what I mean here in just a minute. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of adjust some of these to see what we think. I was playing some Paladins the other day. I meant to tell you that. I, I, I sort of was playing some. I'm, I'm still trying to like... Well, I've played a lot of Overwatch. So basically, you know, I have a good understanding of the games and, and how, you know, the style of gaming. Well, but I'm really trying to like get into Paladins and have a better understanding of it. PC. Um, and I don't really know a lot about the characters yet. But where I'm struggling is like with um, I'm struggling with just learning the different characters and trying to understand what their specials are. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. That's where I'm sort of struggling at the moment. Um, actually, would the Gaussian Blur go on? You know, I'm curious how that would work. Let's put the Gaussian Blur, I don't know if this is gonna work. Two? So it does work. Okay, that's fascinating. I didn't know it was going to work that way. So on Overwatch, um, I tend to play Moira a lot. Um, and I tend to play um, Lucio. I, I play a lot of healers. I like playing healers. Because I like DPS slash heals. But I don't mind healing. Like, healing is something I enjoy. But it's one of those, like, tried Sarah. Um, is that the blindfold looking lady? Yeah. Okay. I tried her, but here's the next thing. I've got to get a better understanding of, like, the builds and everything. And then the other thing I'm not used to is the cards, or, not, or I don't know if they're cards. I don't think they're cards. The, the, help me out here. The, the, traits you buy like the increase your defense and you increase like your healing i don't even know what they're called but like you buy them in between like matches and stuff and like little hourglass and it reduces cooldown and that kind of stuff what am i saying here items okay they're the legit called items okay 
done with those, I need to get like a better understanding of first a build, and then I need to get a better understanding of the items and how they impact. You know what I mean? Like the different classes and stuff. And that's something that I'm I'm trying to figure out. And I think the only way to do that is play the game, right? Sure. I mean, I would like to know what the heck I'm doing. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be a complete total noob. Like, I don't want to be the one moron that's out there and everybody's like, you know, I am trying to learn. I just don't really know much about it. So if you go to your character, you can import your cards. Mm, okay. Look me up or Metro up and import the character loadout. So is that within the game? So like when I'm in the game, I go to their loadout and then I can, yes. Okay, okay. So do you play on PC or do you play on, what do you play on? You read their cards and get an idea of how they play. I play on PC and PS4. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to learn. I, I'm, I'm trying to get better. Um, I'm still trying to figure out, like, what characters I want to, I really want to play with. I, I'm liking the blindfold lady. Whatever you said her name was. I like her. I'm like, I liked her when I used her, but I just really wasn't sure on the cards and everything. And I was like, well, shoot. Um, and then the other thing that I've got to get used to in that game is, it's not like Overwatch, obviously, where you can just swap your um your character at any point so like once you choose heals you're doing heals or once you choose tank you're doing tank like that's that's it you're locked in but that's something i gotta sort of get used to as well because that that's where it's a little bit different am i right on that most supports can damage same with tanks okay and see so i i kick butt with moira on uh, Overwatch, like I, I do great with her. So I'm, I'm thinking with her, I should be able to get in that same vein, like in that same groove, if I just use her some more. I might play some after I stream a little bit and and just sort of play around with it and kind of see how it does. Same with tank. See, and I don't mind tanks. If I play tank on, if I play tank on. Um, Overwatch, I tend to play Rhine, or I will play Rhine, pretty much Rhine. Yeah. Because it seems like there's a pretty active community around Paladins on, on Mixer and everything. Because I thought about streaming it some. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, sure. That'd be fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm still not that good at it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not terrible, right? Like, I play Overwatch. I'm, you know, I understand the mechanics and everything. It's just like I said, like, the thing I don't understand is, like, what all the other characters are doing. Like, what are their ultimates? And, like, you know how when you play those kinds of games after a while, somebody will say something or you'll see something trigger and you understand, like, uh, who's, uh, you know, like on um, D.Va on Overwatch. You know, nerf this, you know what's coming, right? You know to get out of the way. And so it's one of those things, like, it, it, that, I think, is just going to take time getting used to the game and what the different characters do and how they do it and understanding, you know, just different things like that. 
Exactly, exactly. Because it's the same thing in Overwatch. Like, you're playing Overwatch, you hear nerf this, you, you, you run, you get behind a wall or something. You know, but again, that, that takes learning. You know, and, um... High Noon. I mean, everybody knows what's happening when High Noon happens, you know. So, I mean, it, it's one of those... You, it sort of becomes, a. Uh, yeah. I do like it, though. I like it a lot. I don't understand why it gets a lot of bashing from the Overwatch community. Because... In some ways, I think it's a little better than Overwatch, but I don't understand that. Like, I don't know if it's just an elitism thing or, or people just, I don't know, seem weird. Because I mean, I, I enjoyed what I played of it. And I was telling Metro the other day, I don't know if you heard me. I, um, I heard uh, the other day I, I bought well, it wasn't the other day. When I bought my video card upgrade, I actually was sent a uh, code for, like, I want to say it was Paladin's Ultimate Edition or something. Um, and so I have every character. I have every character unlocked. So, I mean, I can use whoever I want. Um, now, I don't have a whole lot of elves. I mean, I have all the characters unlocked. But, you know. Wait, so I just seen you on Mixer. Then when I was going through YouTube, I was recommended to your stream. Well, hey, Cybot. <laughs> I don't know why, but hey, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming in. That must mean I'm doing something right. If I would, you know, if you found me on Mixer and you found me on YouTube, we're doing something right here, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the comment. That makes it easy. Yeah. So, I mean, I have all the characters online, which is great. Because then I don't have to, like, I think you gotta, you know, earn whatever and unlock them or whatever the situations are. <laughs> what were you, just curious if you don't mind me asking, what were you looking for on YouTube that brought you to me? Or what were you, what were you searching? If you, if you don't mind me asking, just curious. Were you searching like vector art? Were you searching like, I'm always curious about that. Like how did that algorithm work if people were to look for me? So do you play a lot of Paladins in Offa? I'm assuming you do. You're hanging around with uh, Metro and you you mod for the the um, that kind of stuff. Oh, you're wanted through recommendations. Wow. Okay. Well, awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for answering that for me. It's always interesting to understand what the algorithms do and and how people like. I like to ask people, how did you find me? Especially on YouTube because YouTube to me is a very curious animal. Like, how do people find you? You know what I mean? And know what you're doing kind of thing. Because we just started restreaming to YouTube a little while ago, uh, Cybot. Like, we, we restreamed between Mixer and DLive. And I wanted to throw YouTube in there since I'm building my YouTube content. So, yeah. It's an eSport community manager. Oh, okay. I really enjoyed it when I played it. Like, I, I had a great time. If I, I, I'll be honest with you, I put off trying it for a long time because I played Overwatch. And everybody I heard talk about it talked about it in such a negative light, especially people that play Overwatch. And I was always like, <clears throat> I didn't really understand it. And then what did it was, I got that code to unlock all the characters. And I said, well, shoot, I'm going to go give it a try if I, if I have the code, you know. And um, I tried it, and I enjoyed it. We're talking about um, Paladin Cybot, not sure if you play any anything like that but okay but so we're gonna we're gonna keep building this up I'm liking the direction of this I'm liking the depth this picture is starting to get I'll tell you one thing that's gonna hurt help sell it let's give these back mountains a two Gaussian blur effect yeah that's a little too much for me Actually, let's go with one. I want it to be subtle. Okay. What are these on? These are on one. Okay. Good. Yeah, you know Paladin? Very cool. Yeah, I was mentioning that I um I play a lot of Overwatch. And I decided to go ahead and start giving Paladins a try. And I'm really enjoying it. 
and it's a fun game. I think it's I think it's a lot of fun. I want to learn it more. Like there's a lot of the characters I don't know yet. I don't know a lot of the special moves and things like that. So I've still got a lot to learn there. But for what it is, I'm enjoying the game as a whole. So definitely going to be playing more of it. I don't know why, what I've heard from Team Chat and Overwatch, people don't really... Yeah, and see, that's exactly what I'm talking right, right there. Like, you hear a lot of negativity about it in Overwatch, and, and it, it seems funny to me because, like, it, it, I, I always laugh at that because it al it's almost like people forget you can play more than one game, right? Like, it, it's okay for two games to exist in the same world, in the same, you know what I mean? Like, the same category? <laughs> like, it's all right. You don't have to hate it just because it's not that. But it seems like people really like to get negative with it. Which is unfortunate because it's a very fun game. I love both technically and work for one of them. Well, see, there you go, Asman. I like them both. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't know why people can't, right? Like, you can like... It's sort of like... You can really like this, this type of soda. And you can really like this one too. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay. You don't have to be like, oh, I'm only drinking Pepsi. But I guess everybody's different, you know? <laughs> the box what box oh you're talking about the chest uh, no I think Paladin's a little more complex but that's my opinion now I would agree with you on that Ozma, because um, the way you have to like do your builds and the way you have to depict the items and stuff that doesn't exist in Overwatch Overwatch is just purely about I'm playing Reinhardt, this is how Reinhardt plays. That's it. Like, this is Reinhardt. There's no way to, like, build the character a little different. You know? And I agree. Yeah, too. Yeah. I do prefer Overwatch. Yeah, and that's cool, you know? And that's the thing, is that everybody can have their own, you know... Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna be playing more power. For sure. Absolutely. Like, I, I really enjoyed what I played. Let's. So we, we're starting to build this out. I'm gonna take this one up higher. I like the way that's looking. Kind of come in here like this. I appreciate y'all hanging out. We're just sort of, um, we're just sort of sculpting this tonight. This is this is a drawing that's been in the process for a while, and we're just now really beginning to bring it out. So. Um, if you guys have any questions for me or you have any um if you're wondering like the software we're using or techniques we're using or anything be sure to let me know see how much more natural this lighting looks here i really really like it this is actually affinity designer Bye -bye. so if we go to software you're going to see the link pop up there for affinity this is a by a company called serif and they've actually been in business for about um 30 years, but they just recently released their whole, what they're calling their Affinity line. So you've got Affinity Designer, which is like Adobe Illustrator. You've got Affinity Photo, which is like uh, Photoshop. And then you've got Affinity Publisher, which is like InDesign. And they're working on more products as well. But yeah, I use the Affinity product. Yeah, exactly, Cloud. Yep. Affinity Designer. Yep. Yep. And you guys can see a little slideshow over here on the right. It'll give you a really good example of what I make, the kind of art that I make. I'd say 95% of that was made in Affinity Designer. Uh, some of it was made in Gravit Designer, some of it was made in Inkscape, but a majority of that was made in Affinity. So if you guys have any questions, be sure to be sure to let me know. And I do primarily vector. I do a little bit of pixel every now and then, um, but mainly vector stuff. You know, Affinity. Yep. Affinity's great stuff. Like I've, I've been in using Affinity now uh, for quite a while, and I have turned so many people onto it, which I'm thankful for because I think it's fantastic software, and I think it's 
it's only going to get better. And I think it's wonderful that people are beginning to find it, use it, and fall in love with it because it is really, really powerful software. And I don't really get into the, you know, a lot of people say, well, is it, is it better than, than Adobe? And it's like, well, you know, the answer to that is how much money do you want to pay and what feature sets are you looking for, right? Like if, if, you're, if you're happy with the feature set Affinity offers you, which I think is extremely powerful, and you're happy with the price Affinity offers you, go for it. But if you want the feature set that like an Adobe product would offer with that price tag, then go for it. But you know, they're, they're vastly different in the pricing. Um, so that's really the, the, the deciding factor, I think, for a lot of people on where they want to sort of, you know, where they want to live. Oh, hey, Drunk Barton. That's funny. How it recommended that. That's really cool. Yeah, and I'll throw down my social links real quick in case anyone is wondering. I am on YouTube. If you guys want to follow me there, you're welcome to. No pressure. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram and DLive and the Mixer. So if you guys... Um, want to see my regular art, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to see my live streams, you can watch me on YouTube, Mixer, or DLive. And then on YouTube, I upload uh, tutorials. So I upload vector art tutorials. I upload video editing tutorials, things like that. Um, yeah, but thank you guys for being here. I really do appreciate it. Alright, let's pull this out. We're just kind of playing this. It is not. Affinity is a one-time $50 charge, and you own it. Um, and that includes all future updates and all that other stuff. There is no subscription model. There is no sort of, you have to continue to pay for it. You buy it, you own it, that's it. That's super good. <laughs> yeah. And I will also say this. When it comes to vector art, I don't think there's anything else close to Illustrator as Affinity Designer. There are other vector programs, but I don't think any are quite as feature rich as Affinity. That's my opinion, you know, because of course I use it. But I do believe that Affinity is probably the, the premier um, alternative to Adobe Illustrator. But again, that's my opinion. You know, it's not necessarily going to be everyone's opinion, but that is how I feel about it. You're not a big fan of the subscription ones. Right, and that's why I sort of gave up on Adobe was I was getting a little tired of the subscription models and I could kind of see the writing on the wall when Adobe started going to the sub models. I could kind of get a sense of what it was, where it was going, you know, and how it was just going to continue to go up because anyone can tell when it comes to subscription models, companies start getting greedy. They start looking at how much money they're making consistently and then what happens? Oh, they keep raising the price. They keep raising the price. They keep raising the price, right? And so it eventually gets to the point where it just becomes astronomically expensive, which is not a good thing, but it happens. Hey, Dragon, what's up, buddy? Thank you for the host. How you doing, sir? Thank you, thank you. We got a new Real Crofter, thank you for the follow. Hey, guys, how are you? Dragon, I thank you for the follow. Oh, it's a dragon raid. Hey folks, how are you? We got a new follower. Thank you for the followers, guys. I appreciate that. Okay, let's see if my uh, let's see if my my raid screen is working. I fixed it. Ah, we got a new. Oh, no, there it is. Hold on to your Thank you for the followers, folks. I do appreciate ah, that. Ah. So everyone coming over with that raid. Thank you, thank you. If you guys oh, don't know who I am. Uh, my name's Jeremiah. Uh, I have a creative stream here on Mixer and DLive. And I create vector art, pixel art, animation, things like that. Thank you, thank you. And there's we my social info. Thank you, guys. We gotta, go, we gotta go see who all the followers were. I didn't even see them all. Thank you, guys, for the follows. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dragon, thank you so much. Thank you for the raid. You guys are awesome. We keep it sort of chill and low-key here. Um, if you guys have any questions for me, uh, what I'm doing, the softwares I use, the techniques I'm doing, feel free to ask. Um, 
I'm open. I'm always willing to help somebody learn if I can. Um, other than that, you'll see my little slideshow over here. Give you a good showcase of the software or the the art that I make. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. And thank you for all those followers and the hope. Thank you. Wow, guys, thank you. You guys are great. Thank you, thank you. So we're working on this little fantasy piece. Good to see so many people, right, Osma? Thank you, guys. Dragging it. Thank you. Thank you for the spark. Hey, Seven, thank you for the spark. Thank you, guys. I lost count of everything, so I'm just going to say one big thank you to everyone. I really do appreciate it. All the hosts, the followers, and the spark. Thank you. Great to see everybody. All right, let's... How you doing, buddy? But look, Dragon, we need to... I need to get with you. I want to do a... Um, I was telling you the other day, I've started animating a small dragon. I want to do a little intro animation for you, buddy. That way when you come in the stream. Sort of like we did for Seven. How you doing, Mr. Seven? See his little animation there? And of course, we've got water bottles. Hi, water bottles. <laughs> I want to do a little entrance animation for you when you come in. So I was thinking maybe we could have like a little dragon fly down and land or something when you come in. How would you like that? I think it'd be fun. Because I started animating like a baby dragon. Okay, all right. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. Yeah. I, and I've got one for Metro Birdman as well, right here, guys. Um, it's a little Metro that flies up in the screen and stuff like that. Because what I'm trying to do is for people that support the stream, my mods, and people that frequent the stream, and big supporters of what I do here, which I'm very thankful for, I want to give back, you know, and kind of do little animations for them that sort of represent who they are and what they do. Um, that way, you know, it kind of just... Why not? Fun, it helped me learn, and it does something cool for them. And then, of course, whatever we come up with, Dragon, I'll uh, give you a, a GIF or a um, like a video copy if you want to use it in your stream anywhere. Really cool. Thank you, Biz. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. It's something fun. I think one day what I'm going to do, where I'm going with that, Biz, is one day down the road, what I'd like to do is if I get to partner level, I think what I'd like to do for, like, subs is I think it'd be pretty cool for people that sub to the channel to be able to do like a small entrance animation for subscribers. Now, of course, I would have to work on that slowly. So it would be one of those things where, you know, for the people that sub, we'll do like a real quick, like two or three second little animation. We'll either animate a version of them or something. In fact, I'll show you what I think we might do. For anyone who's Legos fans here, we may end up doing this of, of everybody make like little Lego characters of everybody, as you can see here. Am I a junk rat man? No, I am not drunk. Uh, I don't mind junk rat though. So for anyone who's curious, we also make little vector Lego characters here. Like you can see, we did Kratos, we did Master Chief. We've done some, you know, Wonder Woman, some Princess Peach, things like that. And so this is where the uh, Lego version of Seven and Metro Birdman and stuff came from. So I don't know if we're gonna do like little minifig versions of people and we'll do like a little entrance animation for them or something or we'll do like more of a custom thing i don't know i've got some ideas i'm sort of brainstorming on how we want to do it we did some star trek stuff here too which is cool because as far as i'm aware there are no star trek legos but we kind of we did a data wharf bot and a little kirk here as well um which is kind of fun and of course fallout vault boy and everything but yeah thank you dragon that is i'm humble thank you buddy loop Thank you for the alert. Thank you guys. A lot of upkeep. Yeah, but here's the cool part though. I would only have to do it, it would just be that first time they, first time they sub. It would just be that first time. And then what I think we'll do is, I'm still brainstorming on how to do it. Like, I've, I've got a couple ideas on how I can sort of template it. So that it would just be the first time somebody sub, just make like a quick animation for them. And then it would play when they enter the stream. It would just be the one time when they enter the very first time they speak or whatever. Um, I've got a couple ideas on how I can sort of work it, but we'll, we'll see. We will see. Because the other thing is, it allows me to sort of, um, it allows me to get the practice I need on animations, which I need a lot more, so it's great. Very cool, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, we normally do creative streams here, um, and it's one of those, it depends on kind of what I'm doing, you know? I do, I take commissions real quick. If you have a question about commission, 
Uh, let me see what the command is. It's been so long since I've... I think it's just commission? Yeah, just email me right there. JaredHenning at gmail.com. Um, and you'll you'll see and, and get with me. Or if you join my Discord, um, you can send me a message on Discord and we can talk about it there. You know, either way you want to look at it. Um, and we can, you know, kind of look at um, what you're looking for and things like that. Yeah. Yes, we do, Dragon. We do. Uh, chicken or Shrek? Not right now, Chicken Boy, but we certainly can do that at some time. Um, right now, we're just kind of working on this piece right here. What software do we use? This is actually called Affinity Designer, Chicken Boy. This is by a company called Serif, and they've been around for about 30 years. Uh, but they've recently created what they call their Affinity line of products. And that includes Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Publisher, um, which is really, really cool software. And then for my animation stuff, in case anyone is curious, I use a software called Moho, which is a vector-based animation software. And I'll kind of show you what that does in case anyone is curious, because I like to kind of give people a good rundown. So with Moho, I can make a flat vector face like this, and then I can animate it like this. So even though that is a flat 2D face, you can animate it to look three-dimensional, which is pretty cool because that's one set of drawn assets animated in a 3D plane. Cloud happy, thank you. Yeah, so we use a bunch of different software depending on like what it is that I'm trying to do. Technically, he drew ducks the other day close to a chicken. Yeah, I did, Oz. That's, that is exactly right. Yeah. Have you used it before, Biz? Moho? And then, like, I've done stuff like this as well. This one is a really good example to kind of show people. You see these buns and this, or these bones in this controller here? You're going to see as the bones and the controller move, they control the life of the character animation. So you're going to see the squash to stretch. You're going to see the eyeballs move. Uh, but what's cool is that little character there is one static, flat, 2D vector character. It's just animated in a way that it sort of forces the movement, right? And pretty cool, pretty cool. But I do a lot of different things, and you know, animation is something that I'm still sort of learning. Um, yeah, going from there. You're pretty right, though, Oz. We did that. Uh, that was in the isometric one, wasn't it? Where we drew those little ducks or whatever they were. I think that was. Yes, that's that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. And the alligator. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was fun. The goldfish part. The goldfish. Yep. I have. I most work in 3D, but always looking for neat programs to do very specific things. Yes, yes, and that, that's the key right there. And, and so you'll notice here, Biz, that I don't use a lot of Adobe products anymore. Um, I'm trying to get away from the sub-model they have going on. Nothing against people who do use it. It's just a personal preference. I'm trying to branch out. And I like to, I like to be able to offer people alternatives. So we have a list here that I always throw at people, which is basically software is going to be the paid softwares that I use. And then here's a list of free softwares that I use. Uh, that way, if anyone ever comes in here, I like to kind of have softwares to be able to throw at people uh, in case they're looking to start vector art for free or they're looking to start animations for free or whatever. I like to be able to give people things to kind of get going with because, you know, I realize that not everyone can afford to just run out and buy $400 software, $500, $500 software, whatever it is. And, you know, that, that kind of goes without saying. So... We like to be able to, to give people advice and inspiration and just kind of, you know, help people learn if we can. That's a very, very strong recurring theme here is uh, just helping people out. and Yeah, it's fun. And we are actually one other thing we're getting ready to start up. If anyone here is interested, uh, at one point in my Discord, we were doing a weekly drawing challenge. We're going to start that back up. Um, we only stopped it because I had to take a break for about a month from streaming and everything because I had some real life stuff come up. But uh, we're going to be starting that weekly drawing challenge up again. There's no reward. There's no sort of uh, you win. It's just about getting people motivated, getting people drawing. And it's open to any medium. It could be 3D. It could be vector. It could be pixel. It really doesn't matter what it is. We pick a topic and then we draw it. Um, and then we showcase what everyone draws live on stream every week. And we're going to be starting that real soon. Um, just kind of as a way to incentivize people getting into creativity. So we'll be some more information about that real soon. 
I do. I do Inktober. I will show you some of my Inktober last year. Now, it's funny. I don't do a whole lot of, um, I don't do a whole lot of, like, hand drawn anymore. But these were, like, my Inktober drawings. And I, they are done in Vector. But I sort of made them look as though, with the black and white and then the heavy purple shade, I sort of made them look as though they were inked, right? Um, and I did, you know, almost the whole month. And I did a whole bunch of different characters. Like we did, you know, this little dude here. And they were all sort of done in that ink sort of vein. And I'm going to do it again this year. It was good fun. But they were all actually done in Infinity. And right there, right there is the Inktober prompt list. So you can see it right there. And this was week, I think it was. Yeah, this was week, number 15. <laughs> and the guy's all wobbly in the knees, you know. And the, and the elbows and everything. But it was really good practice, and what what else was really cool about it was it was the limited use of um, the limited use of color palette, you know, because they were all sort of this. I really like this one because it kind of reminded me of uh, like a Tim Burton film or something. But it was a limited use oh, of uh, color um, palettes, you know what I mean? So it turned out really, really good. One. Hey, Godfather, what's up? Thank you for the host. Yeah, it was good fun. I mean, you know. So I will do it again this year for sure. Um, but here's just, you know, I had a bunch of different ones in here. Like I did this one here. I don't remember what it was, but it was like a little dancing skeleton dude. And again, it's all vector, but growing grow in pain. Yeah, in a way. That's a fun picture. I need to explore this more. Um, we did this one with the little robot. What I liked about it was, first it's vector art, right? So it's super clean. You doing Tober 2, John? I want to see what you do this year. What I liked about them is they're super duper duper clean, right? Because they're vector. So they just have a really high quality output. Like they just look super sharp, which is really neat because it creates this really interesting clean interface. But yeah. But we will be doing Inktober for sure. And for anyone who doesn't know what Inktober is, every, um, every October there's an event called Inktober where you're sort of inspired to draw whatever the word of the day is. And there's all kinds of different prompts, right? And you um, you basically upload your drawings, tag them in Tober, and just have fun with it. There's really no sort of, there's no there's no winning or incentive. You know, you don't really incentivize anything. It's just about having fun. Sure, what's up? I do random for Inktober. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, I usually follow a prompt list just to kind of keep me moving along. How long have I been an art streamer? So, I started streaming art on Twitch uh, just about two years ago. Um, I streamed on Twitch for about six months, which got me to... I got affiliate pretty quick over there. But once I got affiliate, I didn't really like the fact that I couldn't restream because my eventual goal was to be able to get my art to reach a broad audience. So I stopped streaming on Twitch and I moved to Mixer. And I waited for a good long while. So I've been on Mixer for about a year and a half, but I've been streaming art all together for about two years. Um, and I wanted to wait till I had built up my presence on Mixer quite a bit. And then once my presence was there, then I was going to start branching out and restreaming to other locations. So we restreamed to YouTube now. We restream to DLive, we restream to those three. Um, I don't restream to Twitch because if anyone knows about Twitch, um, once you're an affiliate or a partner, you're not allowed, well, let me say this, you're not supposed to restream, right? So um, some people do it. I don't really want to get into the logistics of it. So I don't, I just sort of ignore it at this point. Um, but it is there. Um, once in a while, I might stream there directly, but I don't restream there. But yeah, so right, right about two years, I would say. Right about two years. Let's do... We'll do like a bird or something. Would you like a little... If we did... What should we put in the tree? Like a bird? Like maybe some sort of a bird shape? Or what do you guys want to see here? But yeah, I've been streaming art a good long while. And it's been a lot of fun. Like, I, I really do enjoy it. Um, I love streaming art. In fact, it, we were having this discussion the other day. I actually feel funny when I stream video games because I'm so used to streaming art that 
it just is kind of it fit the vibe of my streams now but once in a while we will stream a game um it's just not very common not very common at all an owl we can do a little owl i think we'll do a silhouette but what we'll do is we'll come over here and watch this we'll move this whole row of points like this and then we'll move these points back like that perfect we'll move this up here as well cool well, let's put a little owl sort of nested right here in this in this loop right here so we'll do a small owl sort of like i would say this and what we'll do is you'll see here a lot of the times what i do is i start with a very general shape like this right and i'll go with the same color for now and you'll see that this is a very, very basic shape. And the reason I do this is if you don't know anything about vector art, it's all about manipulating points. So it's about creating a shape like this, okay? And then what you can do with set point is you can manipulate these points in any direction you want. So we could add a point like this, drag it out. We could add in points like this, we could move it in, we could move it out, we could add a point in the center. So it, think of it almost as like sculpting, right? You're, you're basically creating the piece and then you're adding points and you're moving things around that you want to do. So you can basically start with a very simple shape like this and then you can just kind of build it up. Now this isn't the only way to do vector art, this is just one of the ways. And it tends to work pretty well. And then what I'll do is things like this just to add some variance. What we'll do is we'll bring in the neck a bit. Very nice. A little too wide, a little too broad chested. We'll bring them in just a bit like this. This, what we'll do is we'll move it up. We'll do another layer. We'll add point, 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 point. And we'll move this one down as well. So it's sort of like this. And then we can just take all these points and just move them up. And you see how you start to develop like a shape here, right? And we did it all from that one original shape. And that's what I tell people is really great about Vector. If you have the ability to sculpt like this, you can almost just sort of, you know, you could essentially start with a square and just work your way out. Because I do that a lot. here cool so I don't like this straight point here so I think we'll kind of tuck this in a bit and then we'll move this one over in great so we're starting to build this up now what we'll do is we'll work on the head and I think for this we will we're already going to use the body shape and we're not really worried about so again, we'll start with just a basic square up here. See that? And then what we'll do is we'll work the shape into the, what it is we're looking to do. Good. Yeah, I like that. Good. We'll start here. Fantastic. Now, but let's do some like really overly ridiculous shapes up here for like where the where the eyebrows or where that hair sort of up the top would be make him look like sort of an old grumpy uh owl and you see how it sort of just starts to take shape and then of course this is a very simple version of what a um you know vector art would be i mean you can do you can do other things. I mean, you don't have to do it like this. I could show you other processes around vector that are just as simple. It would just have a different look to it. This is more of like a, a hard edge sort of look. But like this, and then what we'll do is we'll kind of come in from the side like this.
<laughs> Did that answer your question on the art streamer stuff, bud? It's been a little while. And I love it. Like, I, I, I love everything about it. It's, you know, it's a little bit different pace than, like, the people who play games and stuff. But I really enjoy it. I hope you guys do. Alright, cool. Kind of go like this. I think what we'll do is we'll kind of, I'm sort of visualizing this like this as well, kind of like a little tuft of hair down here. We'll just kind of drag it out like this, might be the best way to do it. A little bigger. Perfect. But then we'll take these two shapes. Now watch this. We can take this and this, we can group it into one solid shape. So now this is one solid vector shape. And then of course, because it's vector, we can go as big or as small as we want to with it. And we don't really lose quality, which is fantastic. So we'll just kind of nest him right there in the tree. Now we have this, you know, owl shape in the tree. And here's where this is cool, right? If we look at the over, overall size of the picture, this is 1080 by 1080 pixels, right? When you zoom in, you don't lose quality. So this looks like I'm drawing this at this size and this is the picture, but it's not. We're zoomed way in on this one small asset. When we zoom out to what is the full picture, you're basically going for the silhouette here. You're not going for ultimate, ultimate detail because it's not like a hugely detailed thing. This is just a small item in the picture. So you've got to remember, you got to treat it as such. Um, you have to sort of remember that you're zoomed in, zoomed out, or whatever the case may be. And in a picture like this, it's sort of a zoomed out scene. You're not really worried about zooming way in, way out, or whatever the case is. Or, you know what I mean, like details on those small things. I hope that makes sense. I think it we does. We got a new follower. Hey, Grim GMC. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that support. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who followed earlier with the raid. I do appreciate all of you. Thank you. Okay. Let's go. This is Affinity, yes. You must use it. Anytime somebody comes in and they say Affinity, <laughs> they must be an Affinity user. I do. Awesome. Yep. Uh, you will see my little slideshow over here on the right. Is um, I own it on iPad as well, Grim. Yep. Um, you will see that is sort of my slideshow. I would say probably 95% of that was made in Affinity. I do use a couple other softwares, but 9 times out of 10, anything you see here is going to be made with Affinity. And I've been sort of getting into like scenery stuff like this. This is sort of a new hobby passion for me. Um, oh, absolutely. I would agree 100%. 100%. Um, yeah. Absolutely, I would agree. Yep. I'm going to continue my fan art. Yeah, no worries, John. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, I would agree 100%. Uh, we do a lot of education here on Affinity Grim. We sort of, you know, I have a, a stream that sort of helps people learn. I welcome people to ask questions and things like that. So what I try to do is showcase what Affinity can do and help people understand why it's such a great tool. And in the process of that, we help people learn about not just affinity, but vector art and, you know, the different uses of it and why it's so good and things like that as well. So it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty fun stream. And I think people generally go away from it, you know, learning something, even if they're not interested in making art, they have at least a little better understanding of what vector is and what they can do with it. Cool. How long have you been using it, Grim? Yeah, we're gonna do this. We're gonna add some more branches, for sure. We'll add some more shadows, and I think what I wanna do, I wanna experiment with sort of a big one in the back here. We're gonna start with a big sort of shape like this. Here like this, and I think we'll come back like this. Yeah, we'll start like this. We've got a ways to go on this. Yep. 
but we'll go to the back and we're gonna scale down <clears throat> just a couple months gotcha well if, if i can help you with anything let me know um if you have any specific questions or you see me doing you know a specific technique or something and you're curious why or how or whatever be sure to be sure to let me know and thank you for that support i do appreciate that <clears throat> I'm sure we could at some point. Probably not right now because we're finishing this piece. We're kind of working on this. This is the piece we've been working on on and off for the last week. I've had other projects and stuff in the way and had a couple commissions that I really needed to get finished. So I got those done. And now this is one that I've want to get finished up because I've really been enjoying it but it's been kind of kicking my butt because I haven't really been able to dictate what I wanted to do with it so tonight we're just kind of doing some small details here and there with it you know, I've been about three years so I've been doing digital art now for about two and a half Grim. Um, I did I did all traditional art for a very very long time for years and then I quit doing art for about 20 years and then I decided when I got back into art that I wanted to do digital. And so I started looking around at like the different forms of art because digital didn't truly exist when I quit doing art. Um, and so when I got back into art, I really looked around at what was out there and the different forms and the different styles. And I saw a vector and I was like, man, that's what I want to do. Like, I really like the way it looks. I like how clean it looks. I just like everything about it. And so when I saw it, I just fell in love with it. Yep. And then I just decided that's what I wanted to do. And I just dove in head first and started learning everything I could. Um, I started watching a lot of YouTubers, a lot of different um, people that I follow, artists and stuff like that. And I've just sort of absorbed everything I can and tried to learn as much as I can and take away as much as I can from it. You know? Which has sort of led me to the point that I'm at now. And real quick, in case anyone is curious, I don't use a uh, drawing tablet. I use a mouse and keyboard for all my art. I own drawing tablets. I own an iPad, but I am just more comfortable with the mouse and keyboard. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the only way to do this. It just is what I'm comfortable with. But uh, yeah. That usually comes up. People are like, well, what kind of drawing tablet do you use? And I'm like, oh, I use a mouse. And they're like, what? Because <laughs> I think a lot of people, they, you know, they feel like an, a mouse is not, I mean, it depends on the art, right? Like if you're digital painting, you want a drawing tablet for sure. But if you're doing vector, you can get away with a mouse. And I think a lot of people, they, they're surprised when they find that out because, you know, all they hear about is Wacom and Huon and all those things. And they don't really hear about like vector and, and mouse art. Right. Yep. And it does. Now, if I'm using my iPad, which is over here, I will use the Apple Pencil that came with it, or the Apple Pencil that I bought. But um, I do prefer my mouse for me, after art. Now, the one thing I do like is the ability to be able to, um, you know, start a piece on, like, PC, take it over to my iPad, and play around with it. I do really like that. That's nice. Yeah, I... I have never been a big fan of like drawing tablets even though i own one i own a uh, wacom pro over here and then i've got my ipad here i do try to use them though every now and then it's just i'm more comfortable going straight to vector because i don't really sketch either i literally just jump in and start drawing and then we have it you know that's the way i've always sort of done it and it works great for me I know everybody's different on that, and I understand that, but me it works. I am trying to learn to sketch, though. Trust me. <laughs> Made a promise to one of my mods, Water Model. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. So I, I make it a point, I make art every day. Uh, I do try to sketch as often as I can on, like, the iPad and stuff like that. Um... 
that way I'm sort of developing those skills as well. But what I generally do is I sit there and I sketch for a little bit and I try to just get loosened up, but for whatever reason, I always jump straight back to my, uh, straight back into the, um, the mouse and keyboard. This one up here, because this is gonna be a little bit of an illusion. Nobody will know that these are actually points that are hidden down there. Perfect. And then we'll do some in the front as well. So we'll kind of go here with it. All I'm doing right now is I'm sort of building these shapes. We'll work on forming everything out here in just a bit. Yeah. And, you know, I get the benefits of it. It sort of gives, like right now, I have no direction on where I'm going with this other than what's coming out of my head, you know? And that's not to say that's bad, but there are times I realize that it would be nice to have something to sort of reference. <laughs> be like, oh, that's what I was going for, you know? But I also, I, I work really heavily on inspiration. So what I do is, and I think that's one of the reasons I've never really been big into sketching, is I work, I lean really heavy on, I'll be looking at something and I'll sort of get inspired or I'll sort of have an idea just pop into my head, right? And then when I have that idea pop into my head, I just start moving into whatever direction I feel is right. And we'll do a lot of experimentation, sort of play around with, you know, this works, this works, and, and just kind of figure things out. The designer had the same feature of moving shape forward and back. Yeah. So the way I'll show you the way I do it, I'll, show, I'll give you a quick rundown for anyone that's watching here. I don't ever worry about my layers. Let me preface this. I don't worry about my layers, what they're named, what they look like, if I'm not animating. If I'm animating, then I worry about what my layers are doing. Like I do animations like this, Grim. I use Moho to do like animations similar to this. So the art was made in Affinity Designer, right? But it was animated in Moho. But what you're seeing there is that character is actually a 2D shape, just one drawing of 2D shape in Affinity. But he's animated using squat, stretch, bones, and whatnot in Moho. If I'm going to animate, I worry about layer placement, layer names, those sorts of things. Absolutely. Now, if I'm not animating it, I don't care what it looks like, and I'll show you why. For me, the way I do item placement, this is the example I've used before and it works best to sort of show it to people. All right, go like this, put this guy right here. Now, the way I do my item placements is I will either do control, you know, and, and use the brackets to go up and back or what I do is I cut paste and I'll show you what I mean by that let's say I want this red one this red circle I want it um, in front of the blue and purple but behind the orange and the yellow what I'll do is take it cut it choose the purple and paste it and what affinity designer does is it automatically places those items for you now where that gets powerful is let's say I had two groups of this right and let's say I got the purple one where I wanted it and I got the yellow one here where I wanted it, right? And then I grouped this. Well, you can do that with entire groups as well. But let's say I had, you know, four groups of this. What's up, Odie? Let's say I had four groups of this. You can do it with groups as well. So I can take this entire group, cut it and paste it in front of this one, and it's automatically gonna place it there. Does that make sense? We got a new so I don't really power. worry about where placement is. I just draw what I want to draw, group it, cut it and paste it on the layer that I want it to be on. That's the way I do it. It works for me. Free armies, how you doing? Thank you for the follow. Thank you for that support. Yeah. I oh, cheat, if you will. Um, now, we got a host. I'm what not going to say that's probably the best way to do it, but it works for me. It allows me to work in a very quick manner without having to pay so much attention to the layers. See what I mean? And so I'll give you a real world look at this. Let's say I, I had this little pillar here, right? And right now you can see it's between this wave and this wave. Let's say I want it back here against the rock. Well, I just cut it, choose the rock, and paste it, and there it is. You see that? 
I didn't look at the layers at all. I, I don't even care. Like, I literally pick where I want it and paste it. I think that's a really powerful feature, and it allows me to work very quickly. Thank you for the host, Free Armies. Appreciate that. That's just one of the workflows that I've developed, um, and it works fantastic for me. Now, again, if I'm going to be animating something like over here, and I'll give you a quick example. So this is another flat face drawn in his affinity, right? So when I did this, I named it head, eyebrow, eye, right ear, left ear, neck, so forth and so on. Um, if I'm gonna animate like this, then I absolutely pay attention to first where they're at and what they're named. Otherwise, I don't care. So animation is the only time that I work smart, if you'll call it that. If I'm just drawing pictures that I know I'm never gonna animate, then I don't care. Right, exactly. Yep. A lot of people are sort of, because they wonder how I work so quick, they look at me, move things around, and they're like, how are you, what are you, what are you doing? Like, how are you going back and forth so fast? And I'm like, oh, well, and then I explain that, and they're kind of like, oh, because then it makes more sense that I'm not as particular about it. We're gonna take all of these and hit them with a very slight gauge. We'll go, I'd say 0 0.3. That's better. Okay, now. Yeah, and it is. It works really quick. I know a couple other tricks as well that, that sort of speed up my workflow. But uh, it's sort of all over the place. Hey, Free Army, this is just a sketch that we started. I'll show y'all real quick. Are you trying to be diligent? See, and again, I don't want to. I don't want to make it seem like it's a bad thing to do because it's fantastic if you need to do it. Again, for me, it's if I'm animating. It's a great thing to do in general, but if I'm animating, it's the only time I worry about it. Otherwise, if you were to look at my layers, you'd be like, "What?" Like if I handed you one of my files, you'd be like, "What is this guy doing? He's crazy." Because it's literally curve, curve, shape, curve, curve. I mean, there's no, <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason. Uh, so what we're doing right now, free, is we're just doing a random. Um, Sort of scenery and, and i'll show you what i mean by that um lately we've sort of been getting into doing sceneries and things like this i'll open them up and show you so we've been um i used to do a lot of just character stuff right uh but lately i've really been wanting to get into like drawing scenes and understanding how scenes work and play with colors and and just different things like that because I want to think bigger than just drawing a character on a page. You know, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just I'm trying to expand my knowledge and grow. So I started, this was the very first scene I ever made, and it was just sort of an ex exploration into creating a whole picture. Um, and then I've done several others since then. I've done, like, you know, this guy here, which was sort of a, a, a high use of really, really bright, vibrant colors, trying to create sort of like a... I think like a Star Wars sort of a dune scene, like a really vibrant planet. Um, something different. It was good fun. And then this was the latest one we did. And again, this was sort of a sci-fi based land speeder sort of, um, it's really unique sort of scenery with this little city in the background back here, as you can see, sort of going on. And then you got the speeder going across this bridge, you know? And it's good fun, good fun. And so we're just doing this. I can see the need for it in animating. Exactly, Grim. And, and that's why if I'm animating, I'm very, very rigid. In fact, one thing I learned was when I started getting into animation, I was like, okay, now I understand the importance of truly naming things the way they need to be. So if I know I'm ever going to animate something, I absolutely pay attention to it from the word go. Um, do I do this for a living? So I am a commission-based. I freelance, basically, free. And um, so for, a, for my daytime job is IT. I work in the IT field. Um, this is more of my fun sort of relaxation, and then I do this for commission stuff. Um, lately, I've been working on trying to create some more sort of um, ideas on how to create projects or things that I can sort of focus my ability into, like books. Like I'm working on a couple kids books. I'm thinking about starting like a webcomic of sorts. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet on how I want to do that or anything, but I'm I'm sort of exploring different options on things that I can do that would give people, um, I, I'm trying to create something from, for me, you know what I mean? Like I made that, like books or 
um, something, you know? And, and so I'm sort of brainstorming on different ideas. If anyone has any, feel free to throw them in chat. Like, I'm, I'm trying to come up with ideas on how to use my abilities beyond just making pictures, you know? <laughs> because I'd really like to start focusing it into something. <clears throat> I've been on a scenery kick. Yeah, I mean, scenery... So I took on a challenge, and there, that's one reason I'm sort of doing this. Um, I want to try to recreate some Bob Ross stuff, but I want to try to do it in vector art, which is going to be fascinating. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun at the same time. But um, very soon here, we're going to grab some Bob Ross stuff, and we're going to totally try to... We're totally going to see how it goes. You know what I mean? Um... I'm not quite sure how it's gonna go yet. It may be a failure, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a try. It'll be good fun. If nothing, it'll be good fun. Hey, seven, what's up, buddy? Tell me, seven, did it trigger? Did it trigger? You weren't looking. Try your command exclamation number seven, if you don't mind. There you go. So that worked. <laughs> okay, cool. So it's well on its way to working. Hey, Yamasoy, I'll give you a diamond if you sketch me. So yeah, I do take commissions, Yamasoy. Um, I'm not really doing anything like that right now, though. But uh, if you're interested in a commission, um, you can send me an email. So I've been using the selection tool in Procreate to randomly make shapes and soft airbrush with my mouse anyway. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the thing I like about Affinity is you can do both. Let me give uh, Seven a shout out here. Guys, if you're not following Seven of Seven for some reason, he is another creative streamer here on the platform. He is definitely worth your follow. Really nice guy, does great art. Um, I'd recommend checking him out as well, um, if you're not already, um, but thank you. How you doing tonight, Seven? You doing good, buddy? All right, let's do this. We've been here to eat. Oh, right on, buddy. Seven coming in here shouting. That's seven for you. <laughs> what you eating, man? Anything good? Taco, dag on it. That's like that's like my second favorite food. And I'm sitting here late, and I'm hungry, and I shouldn't be, but I am. Damn, 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 damn. Coloring and lighting choices. Yeah, that is... See, and I do that kind of stuff as well, Grim. Like, I'll specifically go out of my way to try and, like, push myself, right? Like, I'll, I'll say, okay, I've never done this before. And I'll go out and try to... Turkey, yeah, you can have your... No, you can have your turkey meat tacos, brother. I mm -mm. You couldn't pay me to eat those. Me and turkey meat... If I never ate turkey meat again in my life, I'd be all right. Like, I refuse to eat. I don't eat turkey on Thanksgiving. I have, I haven't liked turkey since I was a child. Like, I will not eat it. Oh, uh, my wife loves fish tacos, Grim. Fish tacos. She gets shrimp tacos. I, mm -mm. nope. I want beef. I want, I want beef. I want, you know, like ground beef. Yeah, no. Don't, don't even, don't even come at me with no turkeys. Ugh. Nope. I want a taco. I want ground beef, cheese, sour cream, lettuce, tomatoes, salsa, and something spicy. Like jalapenos or something. That That's a taco. Turkey. You're not eating a taco. You're eating a, a turkey pastry. Well, that, that's on you, sir. That's on you. <clears throat> Just line art, sometimes shading, like four figures. I'm trying to use more color. Right. 
And and you know, Grim, that that's a great thing right there because you know, as as you grow in your art, right, it's going to be one of those things where you have to sort of, um, you know, you got to sort of grow and explore, right? And and it's not easy to do because you definitely have to push yourself, but that learning can lead to really, really cool stuff where you figure out like, okay, I'm, I'm getting better at this, I'm getting better at this, or whatever the case may be. That's something that, you know, you kind of got to, you really got to push yourself to do it, but it can be very rewarding, like very rewarding. And so I do it a lot, you know, and I'll, and I'll sort of give myself ridiculous challenges just to see how well I do. And it generally works out for me. Sometimes I, I make things that look terrible. Seven, did you see the other day? Hang on, I'll pull something up here in a minute. I'll show you guys exactly something. So, Seven will laugh at this, I'm sure. I don't think Seven saw it yet. He might have. So check this out, folks. So this was, I would say, just about... This was probably the second vector picture I ever made, okay? Um, and so what this was, and this was me sort of just playing around with vector shapes. And it wasn't a serious attempt, but it was like, okay, how the heck do I even do this? Like, what am I doing? And so what, I've, what I'm doing now is sort of remaking this into my more modern current style, just to kind of get a feel for what it would look like as an updated version. But it's really cool because I like to show people like where you start and where you can get with just practice, practice, practice and growth, you know? Um, and you can see over here, I clearly just had a lot of different concepts I didn't understand yet. But it's neat to see that growth. Isn't digital art isn't real art? Well, you know, I you could you could say that about a lot of things, Grim. You know, um, for people that would say something like that, here's how I would look at something like that. You, if if someone says digital art isn't real art, you're not going to be able to convince them otherwise. So honestly, I wouldn't even try. You know, if they truly think that digital art isn't just okay, have a nice day and go on down the road. The old side is about it's right about two years old, Grim. That's how far I've come in about two years. <clears throat> the years were kind to you. Yeah, yeah, right, Seven? I know. Look at this. Look at this body. I mean, why am I not still using this for a body shape, right? I mean, it's perfect. Look at my wife's butt back here. She, she hates this picture, by the way. Because she says, what are these pants even? Like, what, what was this? And I'm like, look at, you know, look at this cat. I clearly had no understanding of how to use textures or the right way to use them. But again, this was all practice, right? And this was all just where I was at at the time. It doesn't make it worse or better, it's just where I was at at the time, you know? <clears throat> Leggings, yeah, right? For those who believe, no explanation is necessary. For those who don't, no explanation will do. Yeah, right, and that's the thing, is it's like, you know, if, if, if you were to say this, if someone were to truly say this is an art, then they're, 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 they clearly don't understand what art is, I mean. Because, I mean, regard, art is whatever you want it to be. Whether I sit down outside and I use mud and sticks and I and I glue it to a piece of paper, right? Like, it may be not the art that some people would like, but you're still being creative and you're doing something. So, eh, you know. I don't try to get into those hussy fusses with people. If somebody thinks like that, well, see you later. <laughs> you know? Right, exactly. And, and, and see, I like all types of art forms. Um... You know, I'm not just a digital art guy. Like, I, I, I love, I appreciate traditional stuff. I, I appreciate all kinds of art. Like, it's not just about vector or digital painting or pixel. Like, you know, uh, Seven, he does a lot of hand-drawn stuff. I, I, yeah, he does. Like, I'd say he does more hand-drawn than he does digital. At least I would assume. And, like, I love looking at his stuff, too. So, I mean, you know. I feel like I forget to use it. It's been a very long time. I never draw a grab it. Yeah. We're gonna do some more gravit stuff, John, um, on stream soon-ish. But yeah, anyway, we'll come back to this. Be back, bad time for the kiddo. Right on seven. Don't fall in. Oh, um. <laughs> Thank you for that, buddy. Welcome, everyone. I appreciate it, sir. Seven can't take baths. That's that's essentially what that message said. Seven can't take baths. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, I, I know where you're coming from on that, Graham. I've had people say that before, like, 
it's funny when I tell people I do art, right? Like, I tell people I do art, and they're like, oh, can I see it? And I'm like, sure. And I have my Instagram, and I show them, and they're just kind of like, oh, you know, hey, that's cool. You know, I mean, you don't you don't have to like it. Not everybody's going to, and that's fine. Don't worry about it when you get that sort of reaction. And see, the other thing for me is, like, I don't really try to compare to myself to anyone. Because you can't, right? Like, everybody is going to learn and grow at different rates. You know, everyone's going to... Their art is going to be at different levels of growth. Always. Like, where I'm at, as opposed to where you're at, it's going to be a product of the way we've learned over the years. It's going to be a product of how we learn color theory, how we learn uh, per depth perception, how we learn perspective, right? Like, everyone's art is going to be different depending upon what they learned and how they learned it. And that's what makes art so unique, is that if, if we were to throw this explanation down, and me and John and everybody in chat, Grim and everybody drew this, it would look different for everybody, right? Because we're all going to perceive it differently. But that doesn't make any one of them better than any other one, you know? <clears throat> or any other medium better than any one. Sort of the way I look at it. Okay, get in here. We're gonna do some stuff like this, just some small notches up and down. Been a good night. Been a good night streaming. I appreciate all the support, guys. I appreciate all of you spending your time with me and appreciate the raids, the hosts, the follows, everything. It's been fantastic tonight. <clears throat> you should see the reaction when you tell people you work in politics. Two reactions. One, that's pretty cool. Two, two, I hate you. <laughs> I could imagine, Free. I absolutely could imagine. Politics is one of those things, if I was, if I work in politics, I think I'd just walk around. Well, I'll give you a good example of that, Free. So I work in IT, right? You guys know that because I tell you. Now, what's funny about that is most of my neighbors and most of the people that we know through friends, my, of course my friends and family know, but like our neighbors and we, people we know, they don't know I do IT because I don't tell them. Because it's the flip side of that. Everybody wants help, right? So thank you. A7, thank you for the follow. Thanks for that support. I appreciate it very, very much. So I, I kind of know what you mean on that regard. You're afraid to say it because of the negative reactions you can get. I'm afraid to say it because people are going to go, oh, you work in IT, and then they'll, you know, they'll barrage you with questions. It's like, eh, it's not really why I told you, but okay. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of know where you're going with that. It's like I tell my wife all the time. And she, it, this is something she had to learn to do because as you begin to meet a couples and things like that and you begin to meet neighbors and stuff like that that's a common question that comes up oh what do you do for a living and I told my wife very early on shut up don't tell anyone what I do <laughs> it, it, you tell him that I you can tell him I I don't do anything tell him he doesn't even work Just, you know because like I don't need my next door neighbor knowing I work on I, I work in IT for a living because then you know, next thing I know, their laptop is going to get a virus or something. They're going to be like, oh, you know, no, 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 no. Yep. I know where you're coming from. Because my wife used to be very candid about it when we first got together and everything. And then I told her, no, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think I could work in politics. I think there would be... I think there would be very nice parts about it because, you know, of course, you want to try to do good things and try to, you know, but I think there would be a lot of negative. And that's just an outward in perspective. I've never worked in politics, so I don't know. But I don't think I'd want to as a, as a, as a career. But, hey, you know, you never know. I never even considered it. Let's see here. 
Sorry, we're just sort of deep diving on this, folks. If anybody has any questions for me or anything, let me know. I'm just sort of brushing around this tree, adding small details, adding in different things. We're just trying to make it look a little bit better. Adding small details. Let's go. We're not going to really do anything with the owl. I think we're just going to do a bunch of dead branches. Here's what I think we'll do. What if we try to do like some... Um, trying to think of the right terminology here like maybe some moss hanging down or not necessarily moss but like dead foliage in a way if that makes sense like maybe um let's just see what it looks like i mean obviously we're going for some sort of a fantasy picture here anyways right so it doesn't have to be within the realm of reality i mean it could be a tree that has hanging upside down stuff on it It is bad if people think not everyone is so divided and bitter. Right. Yeah, and I, and I think... Uh, right, yeah. I understand what you mean. The news is... The news is a whole different subject, right? Like, I think that... You know, the news is... Ugh. I mean, let, let's be honest here. I think everyone could agree with this, right? The news is there to make money. Right? They're like anything else in this world. They're not there... Not a lot of news organizations are there to actually give people news. They're there to make money. You know, they're there to get the views, get the rating, get the advertising. That's what it is. You know, and um, whether people want to believe that or not, well, that's on them. But I mean, drama sells, you know. I personally haven't watched the news in probably, it's been a long time, very long time. I, I just don't, I don't enjoy it. Godfather, good to see you. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for being here. Uh, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will catch you later. Have a great night. Thank you for that support. looks weird, right? But I don't think it looks bad weird? What do you guys think? I think it almost looks... Again, we're going for, like, fantastical, so it's okay if it looks different. Like, we, we're not going for accurate here. Like, maybe this is some sort of a... I don't know what it is. Maybe this tree has, like... dead stuff hanging off of it. I don't know. I think it looks kind of cool. Go like this. And this is where, this is where, you know, we were talking about earlier. I think it was Grim I was talking about it with. Like, this is where just exploration can really be a really cool tool. And this is one of the reasons that I don't like sketching. Um, and, and, it, and I'm not saying you shouldn't sketch. So let's just get that really clear. Because I think some people, <laughs> sometimes they think I try to advocate against it. And it's not that. I just, sometimes I like the freedom of just being able to look at something as, an, as a blank canvas and just move forward, right? Instead of being so focused on, oh, here's what I sketched. I have to draw this, you know what I mean? And I realize some people, they sort of go beyond that and they, um, you know, they're able to take something they sketched and make changes to it on the fly. And that's awesome. But I think some people, they just, they, they don't let the creativity hit them in the moment. And they worry so much about like, what that actual sketch looks like. I think it's one of the reasons I've never really cared for it. And I just sort of draw, you know? <clears throat> Maybe trying to sound like a real artist. Very cool. I like I like the way this is looking. I, I don't really have an explanation for it, but I like it. Go here. We're gonna take these two center points. We're gonna drop it down. Take this. We're gonna put out. Good. Actually, gonna move this. 
bolting back in like this and back like this. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Now, we'll come here at another point, do the same thing. Good. You can see again, this goes back to what we were talking about, which is sort of that sculpting. This is what it, it sort of looks like. I think we'll do one long one here, sort of like this. Very cool. Yeah, I really like the way this is looking. It has a very neat look to it to me. I think we'll do one long skinny one here that sort of hangs way, way down, sort of like that. Oh, yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think? Good, bad? I think it's cool. I think it's different, but I think it's cool. Um, sort of looks Halloween-ish. Sort of spooky-ish in a way, like something you would see in a... You know? I'm too big. I want them a little smaller. Yeah. I like that. Sort of the subtle, small details. One other thing I want to do here is I want to take this. I want to sort of bend it here. Because I don't want to sort of come here with it. No. It means we're going to have to just sort of move this around. I like that better, yeah. Because it makes sense it would sort of curve at the base, right? Like it's sort of going into that direction. Cool. Okay. Now, one thing I think I want to do, I don't know how this is going to look, but we're going to try it. Ooh, we've got that back there, don't we? Um, That's alright, we can move that. We can move that. Let's go here. Put it down. Do you even see that? Yeah, you do. Okay, so we'll get rid of these two points. Nice. Which is going to allow us to play with the shaping here. Exactly what. Here, here. Um, let's go. Yeah, I kind of like the way this looks. I like it because it sort of looks as though, like, the roots are, you know what I mean? Like, you can just barely see through there. So it sort of looks as though it's starting to come out of the ground, sort of half exposed. I like it. And then we'll go here and we'll drag these two points up. For some reason that makes more sense in my brain. And I do like the way this ended up looking. I wanted a little bigger. Good. Yeah, I do like the way that's looking. It's giving that almost a 3D perspective around the front of that picture. But I like it. Here we'll go a little bigger. General shape. Not sure I like how that is looking. Okay, fantastic. All right, cool. So yeah, this is starting to look good. One thing I think I want to do though, is I want to get this out of here, because I was trying to do some fog down there, and while I like it, I don't think I like, I don't like the, I like it, but I don't, if that makes sense. It's 10%. I think I want to redo it. So I think what we'll do is we'll kind of play with that. Now, I want to do some more with this rock as well. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. I was thinking about kind of somehow making this look runic. Like maybe there's some light cutting through the stone or some sort of making it almost look magical in a way. Like this guy's obviously going up these steps, right? And he's sort of coming up toward the top, which is where this is going to be. Um... So I was kind of going for almost a monolithic looking sort of runic stone is, is, is what's taking place in my head. Now, whether or not that is the way it turns out, I don't know, but it's just sort of the initial thought that I had. Um, and we're going to have to figure out how we want to do some of the, some of the lighting and stuff in there. All right, cool. Well, this is definitely looking better than when we started tonight. We have this nice lighting here that's sort of cutting into the rock. And it's over the character, which is great. Because it comes over. Yeah. But let's come play with this. What do I want to do here? 
we need some more. Uh, let's do like some sort of a runic card. I don't even, what am I trying to do here? Let's, um, this might look terrible. I'm not really basing this off anything in particular. I'm just sort of making shapes. So if it interprets anything, <laughs> which I highly doubt, but if it does, it's just it's not intentional. Um, if I just want to see what this looks like if I sort of create this symbol, right, in the rock. And then we sort of play with the effects around it. It looks more like lightning than anything, which is not really what I was going for, but that's okay. It gives us an, a look, and then there's a couple things we could do here. We could grab this shape, we could give it an effect, like maybe an outer glow, and then we can sort of see what this looks like against the rock. Um, we can go with a second radius right around there, and we'll take the intensity down. Let's go 35%, and we'll go with a radius of two, or two and a half. Good. Right now it's on screen, so there's a couple different ways we could kind of do that. We could we'll make this snap to this. I think you can do it like this with affinity. Can you not? Pretty sure. So then you can go like this, and then we'll add a point and we'll drag it up to this. And you see how nice and perfect that looks there. Now, we're going to take this, we're going to copy it, and we're going to paste the effect. Um, and again, I don't know if this is the way we're going to go, guys. We're just sort of testing this out. Alright, let's see what else we have. we got Outer Glow, Inner Glow. Maybe Inner Glow? Same thing, but reversed. Um, I did that. No, I don't like that either. Got outline, no, 3D, no thanks. Not much in the 3D in Battle and Boss. I don't really use those much. Got a Gaussian Blur, Outer Shadow. Otherwise we just hand create whatever effect it is we're going for since we're not really using low. Um, let's get rid of this. this. Yeah, perfect. Let me try one thing. Here. See if we can make this darker. So we'll kind of go like this. Here. Grab this. Darker? Yeah, I like that. Back one. Nice. That way it sort of makes the stone look like it has just a little more complexity. Maybe. And what we can do is we can grab this one shape, make a point here, and then watch this. We'll stretch this over here like this, and then we'll just drag in these points like this. And we'll drag in another one like this, and down like, whoops. I'd say down like this. So then it just adds that subtle detail, sort of like a chipped away rock at the top. And we're not really gonna do much shading in terms of this. I just gotta figure out what I wanna put on the rock. I might have to do some serious thought on that, sort of crunch away at that until it makes sense. Might be the best way to do it. Let's go like this. Hmm, no, I feel like this would reach all the way up. What would that look like if I actually increase the size of this. Oh, I'm gonna have to... That actually doesn't look bad. And it takes up a lot of the front. Now, for what we'd have to do, though, we'd have to cut it. We'd have to paste it inside of that, though. So it sort of follows that. Okay, I can live with that. Now, we could do some smaller details off to the side and sort of add a little bit of detail going up in. That look pretty cool. Alright, what about a sphere? Maybe there's... If we get rid of this... 
well, not get rid of, but we'll put it there for a minute. So we'll go with here. White. Let's check one. Hit roll. Eh, it's not too Kind of go here with it. Because I know seven, when we had talked originally, he was thinking about like maybe a sphere and an orb or something. Maybe we could do something now floating in the rock. I'm not sure. Ah, uh, this is called Affinity Designer, A7. So if we do a software command, you'll see it. Um, right there is the company. It's by a company called Sarah. They make uh, Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and they make a program called Affinity Publisher. So Designer is going to be like uh, Illustrator, Photo is going to be like Photoshop, and Publisher is like InDesign. And uh, the company itself, you're welcome, the company itself has been around for about 30 years. Um, and the Affinity products have been around for about four. Uh, they basically built them from the ground up to be a suite of programs. Yeah, pretty good software. What, some of the things that are really nice about it is it's a one-time purchase. You pay 50 bucks, you own it. Um, and there are no upgrade costs, there's no maintenance costs, there's no subscription fees. You basically just own it. And it's very affordable. Very, very, very affordable. I think it's uh, the big takeaway. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's really good software. And if you, and if you have any questions on it, uh, be sure to let me know. We do a very, uh, I sort of like to help people learn on here. So if I can help you in any way. Feel free to feel free to ask, and I do know um, they give a 10-day trial with it as well. So if you just want to try it out, um, you can try it free for 10 days on uh, Windows and Mac. Here. Click low. I'm not sure I like the direction of this, but we'll, we'll go ahead and do it anyway. Maybe it's, maybe it's the rock. Maybe I just want to change the design of the whole rock. That might be what it is. Because no matter what I do with this thing, I'm just not feeling good about it. Let's paste that back inside, and we'll do this. We'll experiment. Let's just move this right on up, and we'll leave it floating right there in the middle of the, uh, right there in the middle, until we kind of play with this. Maybe we need to do something less stone-like and more obelisk. So let's do it more like this, maybe. And again, we're just sort of sketching here, folks. So it's probably not going to be perfect the first time over, and that is perfectly fine. This is only just the way that I'm visualizing it in my head, you know, and it may still not be right, you know? Would it be floating? Would that make it look better? Since it's, we're going in sort of a fantasy magical realm, would it make sense that it was sort of hovering? That might look really cool, right? Instead of being cemented into the ground. Maybe we should have it like a floating sort of obelisk, like a... And we can make it look sort of weightless, even though it's obviously a huge stone shape. Yeah, let's try that. Let's go with it. So what we'll do is we'll kind of hover it here. And then what we'll do is... I'll show you all something really cool. 
so I don't use the the um, pencil tool like most people. Most people they leave the stroke on and they draw like little lines with it. I use the pencil tool. You know, most people they do this kind of stuff and they draw these little line-based shapes. But I don't do that. Um, with the pencil tool, you can actually turn on the fill, and it allows you to create like organic shapes like this. Now, what's cool about this is it is a vector shape. You can see the points, you can manipulate the points, you can add points, but it's a way, instead of using the um, pen tool to make rigid lines, you can sort of do some really neat sort of like organic stuff right out the gate. So if this is your style, you know, that's an easy way to do that. And they actually added a functionality that allows you to do it in a very quick sort of manner. See? Pretty cool. Anyway, just wanted to show that real quick. I like to kind of show what it is when I'm using new tools that people haven't really seen before. Alright, wrong color. Let's go with white. That way it'll sort of stick out. Because I don't know what I want to do here. I don't know if I want this to look sort of smoky and foggy. Or if I want this to look... I think smoky and foggy would be kind of cool. So what we'll do is we'll start here and we'll just kind of loop over it, sort of. Okay. And then what we can do is we can sort of play with the coloring on this and the balance. And then we can make it look like it, maybe it's just sort of floating here. And then I think what we'll do... Yeah, I have an idea now. take this, we're going to use a weird color for the time being, we're going to paint the inside of that. Because I think what this is going to do is really allow it to just sort of see it. To really see what we're, what we're looking at, what we're visualizing. It really is. Because, I mean, it, it, to be, to be honest, it's been too long. You know what I mean? They, um, they, you know, they've really cornered the market. And, and I, and I don't try to bash Adobe products. I really, really don't. I mean, I get it. They they are where they are because for a long time, and still, to be quite frankly, are some of the best products out there. I mean, you know, I just feel like they, with their current business models and, and their practices, I feel as though people are just starting to become sort of fed up with it. I know I was, you know, because I'm a freelance. You know, I do this for fun and I do it for commission. Um, and their pricing model makes it really hard to be able to just stick with that because it's expensive, it's very expensive, and it's only going to become more expensive. I guarantee you over the next couple years, you haven't seen the last of the Adobe Bright Sites. <laughs> it's just going to keep going up because they realize how much money they're making. on. So I've been using, so I did this the other day. This is pretty cool. I, now I'm going to. I'm going to preface this with, I don't do a lot in Affinity Photo, I'm learning it, but check this out. The other day I made this, um, I actually took this picture of a real kid, it's one I, it's a stock photo, and what I did was I lifted him using the um, separation tool, and I actually layered one of my hand-drawn vector characters in between it, because what I'm kind of playing with is how I'm, I'm calling it mixed media how it can sort of blend the two together, like real photography and then what I do, which is vector art. And I'm kind of playing with the, the concepts behind that. So if we look at this, you're actually gonna see that I this is actually a three-layered picture. So what I've done is I took him, lifted him up into a mask, and then I drew the robot on the second layer. So you've got the first layer, the back layer is the picture, the second layer is the vector art, and then the top layer is the mask of the kid from the first picture. So it gives it that almost three-dimensional look, or it makes it look as though the robot was part of the original picture. You know, and, and I'm gonna do some more with this, but this was achieved with Affinity Photo. Um, and there's so much more you can do with Affinity Photo. That was just me playing around, trying to get a little more use with it. Yeah, you're right, they've had no decent competition. And that's why they've been able to do it. And you know, it's, I was explaining to a friend the other day, you gotta realize though, drawing a character and put, yeah, right. 
And see, I don't. I, I want to like actually make it part of the like in between stuff and things like that. Thank you, John. So I was explaining it to a friend like this the other day. You got to realize this. I'm an older guy, right? But if you take these younger generations, like these younger creatives coming up, they're used to subscription models, right? And here's the thing. If, okay, so for those of us that remember what it was like to actually buy Photoshop, we could buy it and use it for 10 years. And if we never needed the updates that came out, we could still use it and it wasn't a big deal, right? But here's the thing. These younger kids, they don't realize they're going out, they've never owned an Adobe product, ever. So they go out, let's say they get cloud, and they're like, okay, this is great, I can do what I need to do. Well, good. But as soon as your subscription runs out, you lose access to everything. It's not like the old days where it was like, okay, I, I bought this, I own it. If I don't continue to support the company, at least I can still continue to work until I have the money. Well, now, if you don't pay for your sub-model, that's it. It runs out. Like, it's gone, you know? And I don't think people are looking at that they're looking at how nice it is to have all those products available and they're just like oh this is great i can use after effects i can use yeah and it is it's perfect but as soon as your subscription dies <laughs> you lose it yeah to me that just seems i don't know to me it seems like a really if you work for a big creative company and they're footing your cost that's fantastic but if you're like a small creative I don't know how people can justify that. I honestly don't. Because, like, I just, I don't know. I don't know. And maybe it's just me, you know? But, yeah, I think there's beginning to be better alternatives out there, and I think people are beginning to see that. Which I think is great. And, you know, I'm not saying Adobe should not exist or that they don't need to be there. They are there because they've done what they've done. I just feel like I'm glad that there's competition now, right? Because there needs to be competition. If there's no competition, then things just get stagnant. They, the company gets comfortable. There's no growth. There's no innovation. Things just sort of move along at the same pace they always have. And that is where competition becomes amazing, is it allows them to look and go, oh, well, X is doing this, we need to try to do this because this is a feature that is really, really useful and a lot of people really enjoy it. I think that's where people are beginning to see that, you know? Photoshop 3, I don't remember which version I started with. It was old though, you know? And then I get people all the time, they're like, well, why don't you just, why don't you just crack it? Okay, I get that's a valid, I get that's a valid explanation. But you know, the thing is, is then you open yourself up to, well, what if it breaks it, or what if it doesn't work, or you don't want to use that for production work, and it's just, there's too many, there's too many what ifs around that, you know what I mean? To not own the software. But, you know, I get some people do that, and that's fine, that's on you. I would rather just not do that. I'd rather own the software I use, and be happy with it. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting a lot harder. It's getting a lot harder. And I know with like, that was a big article I read was a bunch of friends of mine were telling me with their latest update, apparently it's gotten really hard. Like they're, they're, they're starting to do more than just, oh, it's a cracked EXE. Like apparently it, it's, there's more to it. Not to say it's impossible because nothing's impossible, but I think it's becoming a much more difficult process. I don't know. I guess I, there's some pride in, you know, owning what I what I use and, and, and taking pride in using the software. At least for me, there is. You know, I enjoy Affinity. I support the company as a whole because I agree, I really believe in what they're doing in terms of what they're doing with their software. And, you know, I, I, I want to support them because I think they have a great product and I think they're really trying to do something awesome. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, you don't know what you're getting into. You start cracking stuff, right? And then let's say, let's say, here's the other thing, right? Let's say you crack something and you're using it and you're using it to do client work. And all of a sudden you realize, 
oh, I need version 16.248 to be able to do this specific thing. Well, then let's say you can't get that version cracked or you can't find it, right? And then what? You know, or what what ex, what length are you going to go to to crack it? And I think that starts to become the, you know, I'd rather just own this and I'm happy and it works and it's fantastic. That's the way I look at it. But again, no no qualms with anybody that does. I mean, I get it. You do you. But it's just not for me. Not what I want to, it's not part of what I want to be doing as, a, as an illustrator and as someone that, you know, take pride in what I do. I'd rather just own it and be done with it. Because I've been really working hard on finding replacements for everything. Like, I'm still working on a good replacement for After Effects. I've found a couple so far that are working really well. You know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely it is. But see, I think there's this big preconceived notion um, that Affinity is just a bad product or isn't good at what it does. And I think a lot of that comes from a lot of people who've been using Adobe for like 20 years, 30 years, you know. They they, they really, they beat it up because they, they, it's sort of that elitist thing. People want to make it seem like, oh, there isn't nothing, there's nothing besides this, you know. Yeah, I don't really understand that type of mentality because honestly, there's more than enough room to have multiple software in the market, but, you know, whatever. Fanboys, yeah, and, and you know, then whatever. I mean, I can tell you this, this is fascinating. I've been starting to see Affinity as a, uh, um, a requirement on uh, creative jobs now. When you look on some resumes, you actually see Affinity listed as a bonus or as a requirement. You're actually beginning to see that, you know? Absolutely, Grim. Yeah, same thing they're creating. Like, did, you know, here's the thing, right? There are so many tools out there. The way I look at it is, if someone uses a tool to get their art done, great, good for them, you know? Like, there's no reason to bash it or say it's crap. And, like, I've, I've had people come in before and like, oh, well, you know, it's not as good as Adobe. It's like, well, okay, good. You may think that. I think it's better in a lot of regard, you know, and, and that's cool. But, I mean, you do you. I mean, you know, all I try to do is educate people and help them understand that there are alternatives. That you don't just have to use one thing. <laughs> you know? I own Clip Studio. I just don't use it much because of the style of art that I do. Um, you know, being vector, I, I'm more into heavy vector stuff, but Clip Studio is a great software and it has a really, really good feature set, but I do own it as well as Moho, which is by Smith Micro as well, the same company. Yep. something like this and then what we'll do is we'll kind of kind of warp this in like this yeah you can you can do vector clip studio i tried it once i didn't really like it and i think a lot of that is because again that program uh, yeah. it's not built with vector as the main right like that's not what it is built for it's built to do comic and uh, and uh, that style of art, like comic and manga and stuff like that. That That's what Clip Studio was made for. It was made to do that kind of art, and it's great at that. You know? It does factor, but it's sort of a loose interpretation of it. But again, that doesn't make it bad. It's just, it does other things really well. You're gonna get Photoshop for iPad when it comes out. So from what I understand, if you have, now I don't know what the pricing is. I know if, from what I've heard, if you have the Photoshop access level of, of uh, whatever the Adobe suite is, then you'll get it with that or you can buy it outright. Right. So if like you have the, you know, the Photoshop, whatever monthly, whatever, whatever Adobe does, you'll have it or you can buy it.
Oh, I wouldn't doubt it'll, I mean, let's be real here. It's, it's, it's an iPad app, right? So I'm thinking it'll probably be in the realm of, I'm thinking it'll be somewhere between 30 to 60 is my expectation for it being an Adobe product. I'm thinking 30 to 60 bucks. But I mean, you know, Adobe could get crazy with it and go out and throw a you know, $100 price tag on it. Who knows? I wouldn't put it past and put a crazy price tag, and I'll tell you why. There's a lot of fans of Adobe, and, and they're looking forward to having Photoshop on iPad, so they'll probably throw two, three hundred at it if Adobe wanted them to, you know? And maybe they will. Maybe they'll make the price really expensive at first just to get a lot of those early purchases, and then maybe they'll, they'll reduce it later? I mean, who knows? I mean, they're going to have stiff competition, I can tell you that, because um, Affinity Photo, um, Affinity Photo on the iPad gets app of the year. It's got an app of the year for like, what, the last three years or something? Last three or four years Affinity Photo has on the iPad? It gets it like every year. People rave about how, how good it is for photo editing on the iPad, so, I mean, Photoshop's going to have a, a tall bill. I mean, not to say they can't, but... They're gonna have to really pull out something amazing. Yeah. I'm really curious to see it, because I have a lot of friends. Like, I've got one friend, she's religious on Adobe. And she's really looking forward to photo coming on uh, Photoshop, coming on uh, iPad. But she'll have it day one. And she lives close, so I'm really, I'll probably get to put my hands on it. I'm really curious to see what, how, how it handles and what it looks like and everything, you know? Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. I've not used that one. And then, you know, you take like... They, they have a double-edged blade either way you look at it, because Affinity Photo is fantastic for photo editing on iPad. And then Procreate, I really don't think there's a better app on the iPad for digital painting than Procreate. I mean, Procreate gets rave reviews. So, photos, or Photoshop's got, they got a tall bill to fill. They've got a couple big shoes to fill. If, you know, who knows? Right. Right. So maybe it'll be fantastic. Mm hmm Sketchbook. Yeah, I know a lot of people, they really prefer Procreate, though. I own Procreate. It, it's really good. It's different than what I do for art, so I sketch in it, but I don't I don't really use it much. Sketchbook Pro. I've not tried it on the iPad. I've tried... We isn't, got a new isn't, power. isn't Sketchbook free on PC? I think I tried it on PC, and it was pretty cool. Hey, Solid Girl. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for that support. I appreciate it. It is now. Okay. But the... Is that the pro version? The free version? Is that the pro version? I'm almost done shades. Oh, awesome, John. I'm just sitting here sort of this is this is basically sketching for me. I'm just sitting here sort of doodling and messing around. I started with 25 a year. See, almost everybody I know, so most people I know that do digital painting or any sort of digital art form on the PC, they use Clip Studio. Um, if they're doing like digital painting or drawing. Almost everybody I know uses Clip Studio. Like, everybody. Um, for photo editing and stuff like that, I see a lot of people using... Um, 
Photoshop, obviously. I don't like computers when I draw, even though I had to forget. Like, oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a little different. It's a lot of vector stuff, but um, it, it's good fun. It's And my style sort of bounces all over the place. Like, sometimes I do character stuff. Sometimes I do um, scenes and things like this. It sort of depends on the mood I'm in and stuff. But I do appreciate the compliment. Thank you very much. I don't really do a whole lot of traditional stuff anymore. Um, I used to when I was younger. But now that I do digital, I do strictly digital. I don't really sketch at all anymore, which is kind of weird. We were talking about that earlier. Um, I usually go straight to vector. I don't really sketch anything out. I just kind of start drawing and figure it out. Yeah, I heard I heard they added something in there, but it's more like for making like little gifs, right? Like making a like a little, you know, couple frame sort of. Yeah, I heard they added that, but I haven't tried it. Yeah. I might try it one of these days, I don't know. Oh, you can do MP4, oh, okay, all right. I mean, Procreate is fantastic. I just don't use it much, but I, I can I can attest to it. It's a pretty incredible product, if that's what you're looking to do. So what kind of stuff do you do? Lover Girl, do you do like just traditional tri uh, like hand-drawn stuff or do you do, do you take anything digital or how does that work for you? I always like to see what people are doing, what kind of arts or anything in general really. Because I like art of all styles. Like, I'm not just a vector guy or a digital guy. Like, I enjoy art in general. I've done a few simple things. Oh, so it's 138. How many frames? Like, what's the max frame limit you can do in Procreate? Is there, like, for animations, is it, like... Is there a max frame limit? Or... I like sketching pastel. Oh, I love watercolors. So when I did traditional, watercolors was my medium of choice. I absolutely loved watercolors. Still do. I love looking at really good watercolors. I think it's, it's such a beautiful art. Based on layers. Oh, okay. So 130. Okay. Yeah. Frame by frame, right? See, and I, I don't mind frame by frame, but I'm getting more, lately I'm getting more into the, like with this, with Moho, right? I'm getting more into the, the vector sort of tween based animation like this, where you create your vector shapes and then you rig them and then you animate them that way. You know what I mean? So it's one of those, like, it's, it's a, it's, it's a different kind of animation. Right, no tween yet, but I'm sure they'll get to it. With Studio Paint. Oh, it didn't like the link creating. Hang on, I can still look at it. Yeah, I've got links turned off so that people can't just spam it. Because if you leave links on, people will... They'll link you things you may not necessarily want to see. Oh, yeah, cool. Yep. Yeah, and see, Clip Studio, that's what I'm saying, creating, like, people, most of my friends that use, that do stuff like that on PC, they use Clip Studio, like, a lot of my creative friends use Clip Studio, and I do own it. Like I said, I just don't use it that often. Right, 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 right. And see, if I want to do quick frame by frame, I'll use Pencil 2D. I don't know if you know about this one, Grim. Pencil 2D is great. Like, if I want to do, it supports layers, it supports keyframes, onion skinning, and all that. And you can do just, like, quick. Well, so, like, if I want to do a real quick, like, bouncing, and obviously I'd spend more time on it if I was going to do it. 
but you could set this to a loop and you see how quickly you can do little animations like this, right? And you can, this supports uh, bitmap layered, vector layers, um, you can do full on coloring, shading, whole nine yards. Um, but it's really great for doing like little quick prototype animations because it is so fast. And this is free on the PC. Um, really, really easy to use. Like super easy to use. Different techniques, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. So for all the new folks out there, um, thanks for coming in. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to ask. Um, we welcome questions here. Glad to help answer any I can. Thank you for the sparks. Yep, I, uh, I like helping people learn and, and pointing people in the right direction if I can, so. What are my thoughts on Sketchbook? Don't really have any, don't really have any negative or positive browning. I've used it. Um, <clears throat> it's not really my style of art because I do more vector art than anything. Like in the slideshow over here. I think it works great. Um, I've used it. I've shown it to people. Um, I think it sort of depends on what style of art you're looking for, right? Like, I will say if I was going to choose, if I was going to choose Sketchbook or Clip Studio, I would choose Clip Studio over Sketchbook, personally. Um, because I think Clip Studio, some of the custom brushes and the things it has in there and the, the support for like user brushes and things like that is a little deeper. Um, but I think Clip Studio is better. But again, Clip Studio costs money. It's not free like Sketchbook. So um, as far as free goes, I think Sketchbook is great. Um, I think that Krita, Krita, however you say it, is great. You know, <clears throat> vector art. Uh, so this is Affinity. Uh, Brownie. I use software called Affinity. I use something called Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo by a company called Serif. They are paid software. Uh, but this is what I use for my vector art. So 95% of what you see over here is going to be done in Affinity. I've had success with this sketchbook, right? And that's that's what we're talking about. A lot of people are using sketchbook. It's a, yeah, I, I installed sketchbook, but again, the style of art that I do isn't really reflective of what you do in sketchbook. Um, because I do vector art, um, which is more of a shape based sort of algorithm art. It's not really, I'll give you guys a quick example. If, if anyone's new to vector art, this is probably not something they're used to. So something that's really cool about vector art, like let's take this little Deadpool that I drew, right? Or moving away from Photoshop. Yeah, they are. So one real quick thing, and then we'll look at some of these questions here. So the really cool part about vector art is for those that don't know, vector art is super clean and it's super efficient. And I'm gonna show you why. Vector is easily scalable, right? So if I take this little Deadpool here, he is 1080 by 1080 pixels. And if we start scaling him, you're gonna see how he doesn't lose quality, right? So if we zoom in on this guy, he looks exactly like he did over here. Right. And then if we scale him down again, he looks exactly like he did. But you can see how far we're zoomed in. Right. That's what vector art's all about. It basically allows you to um, resize and rescale. And it's a super clean art. Right. That's why I like it. How long have I been using Affinity? I've been using Affinity for right around a year and a half, two years, personally. Um, some tips for it. I'll show you some here in just a minute for sure. Yes, exactly, Brownie. Yeah. Don't feel overwhelmed by all the tools. Yep, Grim. Mm -hmm. Um, I want with Sketchbook Pro and Creator both. Oh, so uh, creating art, uh, cat bot. The bot doesn't like the word GIMP. Don't ask me why. It's it's a it's a mixer thing. I, I guess it, it looks at the bad word of GIMP, but yeah, GIMP is also a great tool. Uh, Vector is Adobe Illustrator, correct? Uh, so this is Affinity Designer. Um, this is the competitor to Adobe Illustrator right here. And this is a piece of software that is 50 bucks. You buy it once, you own it, you never pay for update. You never pay for maintenance. There is no sort of a sub model. You pay 50 bucks, it's yours. Um, it's a really good piece of software. And yeah, it's never like the word GIMP. I don't know why. Yeah, see right there, Grim. It caught that as well. You see what I mean? It doesn't like the word GIMP because I guess it looks at it in the negative connotation. So Catbot strips it out. 
Because uh, Grim tried to use it too, Grady. He even tried to put a space in it. <laughs> yes, it, it, it traditionally, so Brownie was traditionally created for that. It was created for doing like logos and banners and things like that. But people have begun to use it or begun to use it for beyond that, like doing character design. Uh, you see it in a lot of game art. So you'll see people use it a lot when they're doing like game art creation and stuff like that. I do sort of a very stylized, uh, like this right here was an, an Alita piece we did live on stream. We were just messing around with it. I use it to do like a lot of scenes and characters and things like that, not just uh, logos and stuff. Because if you learn how to control it, you can get really precise and you can make some really, really cool stuff like this scene we did. We did this one live a couple weeks ago and this was sort of like a, a sci-fi speeder scene with the, seat, the speeder sort of racing through the scene. And um, this is all vector art, right? But it's it's sort of you know it's a very it's a different way of creating art is essentially what it is, right? And that's what traditionally what vector is used for is like logos and things like that. So for some tips, um, let's see, what are you are you just looking for like beginner tips? Like how to get started with vector art in general, or are you looking for like affinity specific tips? I should ask. Affinity tip. Um, I mean, have you used let me ask you this, have you used Illustrator much? Or any sort of vector design software? Yes, in college. Okay, so it's going to be very, very similar to Illustrator in terms of functionality. There are some variances. I'll show you a couple of really cool ones. This is one that most people generally like. So the really cool part about Affinity is it has the capability of doing vector and raster in the same program. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say we come in here and we actually design a just a random vector shape like this. We give it a fill, right? Everyone can see this is vector, it has points, we can add points, we can manipulate points. It's a vector shape, right? Well, what's cool is Affinity has different personas. So we can select this shape, we can actually go in and we can use raster brushes inside of it. So why is this cool? Well, because as you can see, we can do did or we can do raster shading right inside of it. This is all in the same program. I'm not bridging to Photoshop, I'm not doing anything. So what's cool, and the reason I mentioned this is, you can actually digitally paint in Affinity Designer as well. People do it. Um, you don't even have to leave the software. So you can basically come in here, you can you know, shade it with these kinds of brushes, you can then go back and you can keep manipulating the vector shape if you want to, because this software has different personas that allow you to do different things. Um, that's pretty useful. Um, some of the other things are like the way it does layer management, the way it does snapshots. Like there's a lot of tips. I mean, the thing I would suggest for that, if you have any like specific questions on different, like how does it do this, how to do that, that'd be the best way. If you've used Illustrator, the functionality is going to be pretty similar. The way in which you do a couple things will be slightly different, if that makes sense. Does the shading get pixelated when changing size? So it will basically change depending upon. So if we zoom in here, you see how it's maintaining its shape. Now I don't do a lot. I'll give you a really good example of this. I drew a character not too long ago. Where is he? And, and we did this to sort of show people the very right here. We drew this monster, right? So here's what he looks like in his flat form, right here. This is a completely flat vector character with no shading, no nothing, all right? We then moved it over here and we did raster base shading or, you know, raster brushes in Affinity. So you can see some of the shading in here. And then this is your standard vector shading, which is what I like to do right here. Um, I personally like the way this looks. The, the true vector shading, because I think it, it pops. I think it has a better overall look to it. But you can certainly do the raster brushes and do that kind of shading if you want as well. And you can go a lot heavier with it. Um, you know, it's, it's really a matter of how you want to do it. There is no right or wrong per se. It's just 
what you're looking to do. But this is a really good example of just the difference the shading can make and how much it can pop, you know, based off where you go with it. So yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I mean, a lot, a lot of different ways. All right, let's do the, what they taught us that the teacher didn't even have a cheat sheet for the program. Another student found online. So I have cheat sheets for Affinity, if anyone is interested. You even have the option of creating vector layers or rats layers. Correct, Grim. Here's another really awesome piece for anyone that's curious. Um, Affinity products, there's no such thing as a PSD and, an, and a PDF and, a, and an Illustrator file. Affinity has been built from the ground up so that when you make an Affinity file, like let's say I make an Affinity file in Affinity Designer, I can close Designer and open it in Photo and it will read the file perfectly. I don't have to export it to a new file type. I don't have to import the file and then export it again. The file type is seamless, so any Affinity software will open any Affinity files and maintain all the data structure, which is really interesting because they built it that way. Because they didn't want to go on the old algorithms of, oh, I've got a PSD file, I've got to export it to this file, or oh, I've got to, you know, I've got to, I've got to go back to this file type now. They they did away with that. So all the files are universal to all their softwares, which is really really cool. Um, I think it's fascinating. <laughs> So I have cheat sheets right here. If you're interested, I can share them with you. Yes, I can read PSD files. I can open Photoshop files right in it. Um, and I can export it PSD as well. Um, so if we go under here, where are they? Shortcuts right here. I have these if anyone wants them. I have them for both Mac and Windows. I have PDF versions of them. But basically it shows you all the, you know, all the little shortcuts, all the keyboard shortcuts, the different ones that do different things. Um, you know, the draw persona, the vector persona, um, the text tools, the modifiers, layer controls, all that. If anyone's interested in that, let me know. I can put, throw it in like the Discord. Pretty good. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, there's Affinity Photo right here, which is their version of Photoshop, and then there's Affinity Publisher. So photo is obviously like Photoshop. You do your photo manipulation, digital painting, things like that. And then publisher, for those that don't know, it's, it's like InDesign. So it's basically for doing magazine spreads, PDF, book spreads, that kind of stuff. That's what publisher was built for. But I own all three. So, But again, I am partial to the software. I, I like it. I like the company. I like what they're doing. So, you know, I own all three. Yeah, me too. Like, I, I think they've got a really good thing going, and I think that, um, you know, they have a lot of potential to make some really positive waves. And like I was saying earlier, Grim, is I'm starting to see affinity on actual design jobs. Like, there's design jobs now you look at, and you see affinity listed as a requirement, which is amazing. And if that doesn't tell you something, it should. There's companies that are starting to look at it, so that's great. Riot3, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that support. Makes it simpler so you don't have to use JPEGs. Right. Exactly. And because it's universal, you can just open it, right? And and Affinity's not done. They're making more software. And, but they have said from the get-go, all of their files will maintain the same data structure. So no matter which one of your their softwares you're in, it will always be that data structure. So you will always open and maintain one file type, which is fantastic because you don't have to export, import, bridge it, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> that, 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 that's archaic. That, that's an old way of doing things. But that's something if, if to be honest, because people say, well, why doesn't Adobe do that? Well, if Adobe did that, they would have to completely redesign their software because that was something that was built from the ground up that way when Infinity started looking at it. Um, and that's not, Adobe just isn't built that way. So they'd have to completely redo the way the containers and the wrappings are for all the data. Well, yeah, and, and because they're beginning to realize that, you know, it is, it's a viable software. It's not just it's not just a joke or something for freelancers, you know, and that's and that's what I think is great. And that's part of why I stream with it is because I want people to see it. You know, I, I want people to be able to see affinity 
find out about Affinity and be able to see that, you know, there are all, there are alternatives out there. Like, you, you know, you don't just have to use one software. <clears throat> we got a new follower. Hey, Sassyard. Thank you for the follow. Thanks for that support. Thank you, thank you. I think we'll go with eh. that looks so nice. Well, thank you. I appreciate that very, very much. I really, really do. <clears throat> From another site, right on. Uh, yeah, I started on said other site as well. I uh, I started on there about a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, and I made the switch over to Mixer probably. About a year and a half ago, because I, I started there about two years ago, and I made the switch about a year and a half ago, and uh, love it. Um, great communities, great platform, a um, lot of really friendly people. Um, if you have any specific questions about Mixer, or I can help you in any way, uh, let me know. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost done. All right, John. Post it in uh, Discord when you get done, buddy. I want to see it. Yeah, and I currently restream. Um, I, um, I restream between Mixer, DLive, and YouTube currently, which is one of the reasons I'm actually affiliated on Twitch, uh, but one of the reasons I don't stream to Twitch is because I'm affiliated and I can't restream, and I don't like that. Like, I, my intention with my art was always to be able to reach as big a platform as I can and reach as many people as I can. Um, and so that's, was one of my main factors with, once I got affiliated and I understood what that actually meant was one of the main reasons I decided to go ahead and branch out was because I wanted to be able to reach more people. You know what I mean? Well, thank you, Sessie. I use a mouse, mouse and keyboard for all my art. Every single thing I do is mouse and keyboard. Yep. I was thinking of doing YouTube, Instagram, some type of live stream for our classes. Well, yeah, and see, that's what um, that's what I do here is I, I welcome questions and I welcome people to really come in and um, ask questions and get involved because I like, for anyone who's been around, they know that I like teaching, I like helping, I like seeing people learn. So I'm all for, um, all for people asking questions, all for it, um, and all for trying to help people learn. Well, thank you, yeah. So I do vector art, Sessie, which is, is much easier with a mouse and keyboard. Now, I will say, I do own a Wacom Pro, right? I have this, I don't use it that often, and I also own an iPad Pro with like Procreate, and once in a while I will sketch, um, but, you know, oh, don't worry about it, Freddy. Don't worry about it. Um, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. It's all good. Okay, sometimes I paint on Procreate as well. Well, very cool. I don't do a whole lot of traditional art anymore. Um, don't have anything against it. I just, I really enjoy digital, but I love all forms of art. So I love looking at art. I love talking about art. I love learning new art, st art forms, styles, things like that. So we absolutely, got a new absolutely. Follower. Hey, Freddy, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that support tonight, guys. Right. I used to do traditional years and years and years ago, um, but I. Um, so quick backstory on me is I went to college to be an art major and was quickly informed that art doesn't make you money. So I um, I gave it up, went into IT, and I didn't do art for probably 20 years. And then about two years ago, I decided to get back into art and I started with digital. And here we are. Personal three years ago, I've been drawing since 2002. Right on, right on. It can be tricky for new people. I've never done it. I've never done it. Never done it. I've heard of it, but I've never done it. All right, so we're gonna go here. I love learning color theory with mixing and using techniques. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Can't paint to save your life. So my favorite art form when I did traditional was watercolor. I think watercolor is beautiful, and I think if done properly, can just make fantastic looking art. Like, absolutely fantastic. Um, and even to this day, I would say watercolor is probably my favorite traditional medium. 
Um, if I am, if I were to get into it again, it would be watercolor for sure. Because I just love the way it looks. I think it's beautiful. But teach her. Own. And we do animations here as well uh, for everyone that's curious. So I'll, I'll pull up a couple here real quick and show you. So I've done a couple like this for little friends. How you doing, Mr. Seven? I tried acrylic several times and it looks like Bob Ross did ass. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But we do little animation pieces as well. Um, and you'll see that they're all animated using vector art. So I basically create the assets and then I, I um, animate them using Moho. So... You'll see little things like this, and and um, I'm working on doing more animations, and I'm learning how to do like different styles of animations, like animating scenes and things like that. Um, and then of course, like with Moho, we do stuff like this, which is where that is 2D vector art that's animated in sort of a 3D plane. And you'll, you'll see a lot of different things here. I also do animations live. Um, it's kind of hard to teach animation though, because animation is really a whole different mindset. And animating is one of those things that really depends on like what your skill set is currently and what you're trying to do, right? So, yeah. Moho, yes, it'll do tweens, it does bones and controllers. So you basically create your art assets, you rig it, and then you animate it. It's learning backgrounds and scenery. So funny you say that, Setsy. I, um, um, here, let me, we've been, we've been in Affinity for a while. Let's close it and let it refresh. People say to every artist, damn, I thought I was yeah, cool for a hobby. You know, so here's the thing, right? Is like, um, I, I will tell you this. I gave up art and I regret it. I regret the heck out of it, but it was a necessity. You know, I got a good job and it was one of those things where I, I, um, um, I can't complain, but I, I wish I had not given up art. So here's what I've been doing. Sassy. Oh, I love Affinity. Affinity is my go-to. So this was the very first scene I ever did. And I use very stylized colors because I like them. Um, and so this was after me doing a lot of character drawings. I sort of said, okay, I want to learn how to do scenery. I want to learn how to create like actual pictures. And so you'll see I've been slowly getting into the process of creating more and more of it. And so this, each one of them, I do like a little study and I try to figure out a different use of something. So this one I was going for, I really wanted like depth and I was trying to create depth perception and like shading through the trees. And each one of them is sort of just a, a learning lesson. Like, how do I do this? How do I do that? Um, and then they just took, sort of progressed. Yeah. And this one I went for like really hyper use of color, but I did it specifically because I wanted to really create something vi really bright and vibrant and something that had a really just like in your face sort of look to it. And then the recent one, yeah, the recent one was this one. I really like this one because I think the colors blend really, really well, especially the speeder cutting through the scene there. And then, the, you, you know, you got this sort of like science fiction, sort of this futuristic city in the background here. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I've been doing. Is it's slowly just been building. And here was another one I never finished. This was me just sort of playing with like perspective and depth through the scene. Um, we may go back and finish this one day. I don't know. You know, sometimes I do them as just a sketch to kind of figure out placement and ideas and things like that. And I just sort of, I, I kind of let each one sort of build upon the next one. And so it just sort of, you know, learn and keep building. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Something else we did, I'll show you guys this. Um, I don't show this too much, but I'll, I'll show you guys because I think it's pretty cool. So a friend of mine, um, his, um, he had a, um, where is it? Let me find it. Give me a second. Yeah, you can join Discord there. Um, what did I do with that? No, I saved it. I hope I did. Oh yeah, here we go. So check this out. So this was a fun project. This is not um, like something that I do on a norm, but a friend of mine, he had a niece who passed away. And so she was a really big fan of My Little Pony. And so what we did was we kind of wrote her her own, they wrote the book for her. 
and then I, I illustrated it in Affinity Publisher, and we actually turned it into a printed book for her. And I, you know, obviously leaned very heavily on to the um, My Little Pony art style, but we did their own little their own little spin on it. And we did the whole book all the way through. And then they went and had it printed for the family and everything. And uh, it turned out really, really cool. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you a couple cool ones I've done. But this is all vector art. This was done with Affinity Designer. Love the robot. I do a lot of little robots, oddly enough, Grim, which is weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do all that with Affinity. Yeah, for sure. So I do things like this as well, guys. Well, let me show you where the heck is it we do all kinds of stuff here like we do isometric stuff like this this was done in affinity we actually did this one i think like maybe a week ago live on stream but this was sort of an uh, isometric art test we did like these little ducks floating in the water like a little family of ducks we did this little alligator here you know we did the little fisherman you know and the little fish and all this stuff you can do all kinds of fun stuff Absolutely. Yeah, right. We got a lot of new faces here, so I'm just kind of showing you guys some stuff. And, you know, um, but again, if you guys ever have questions, um, feel free to ask. And um, my style sort of goes all over the place. Um, lately, I've been doing stuff like this. I'll show you guys this because I think this is really cool. So here's the original. This is flat. This is what you would call, let's say, traditional flat art. I've been experimenting with making it almost look like a pop-up book through several different means, through using shading and through using actual paper textures. Do you see this? So what's really cool about this is I'm actually inlaying real paper textures and shading to give it a pop-up sort of paper book look. And we're still sort of experimenting with this and we're still figuring out exactly how we're gonna do this because I'm not 100% sure yet, but it's turning out really good, yeah. It's cool. You can do some really cool stuff with it. And I really like this look because I think I'd like to do a book with this style. But you can see, like, it actually has, you see the paper texture in there as I move it around. You see it? And there's a specific way that I'm doing that, but it's turning out really, really good. <laughs> yeah. It looks really cool. And it's a completely different style. The mini game. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, Solly. Yep. Yep. And so you guys never really know what I'm going to be doing on any given night. Like, it's going to be sort of all over the place depending on, you know, where I am or what I'm in the mood to do. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. All right, so let's do this. Yeah, I do a lot of different things. It usually revolves around vector art, but it's going to be some sort of experimental process. <laughs> how hard was it to jump back in not hard at all um so i can tell you honestly one of the big things you'll notice is a resolving theme here all right john i'll check it um is my daughter my daughter is a huge inspiration to me and the whole reason i got back into creative was because of her as she started growing up she started saying hey daddy you know color with me and that kind of stuff and you know i hadn't touched art in so long i was just like yeah and then um so one day um, you know, we started getting into it and it just sort of spawned that interest again. And so I, I started looking at art again and I started looking at digital art and I was like, yeah, I think I could do this. And I just, just went in head first and just started learning, um, and just playing with different styles. And most of my pieces are going to be really a learning piece for me. You know, it's, it's, um, it's always about that learning challenge, which is a big thing for me. I really like to learn new things, so. <clears throat> All right. yeah there you go you know what i mean it, it's just that inspiration to start doing something again you know but that would definitely be my daughter no i don't find it hard um and i'll tell you why is um and i'll use this example real quick and, and i don't want to sound cliche but this is so true um and i tell people all the time inspiration's everywhere and i mean that 100 percent. so let, let's take my desk real quick I'll pick up my phone. This is going to be very standard, but like, draw this, draw this, sit in front of you and draw it, right? Uh, let's pick up, let's pick up, I'll just pick up the next thing I got here. Here's a green piece of paper, what's this? Oh, here you go, it's my daughter it says, I love you, dad, and it's got a train on it with a heart, right? Draw this, like, 
there's inspiration everywhere, right? You, you, you can find inspiration anywhere. You just gotta just open your eyes, grab something and do it. And I tell people all the time, don't be afraid to make mundane things, right? Just grab like, grab a controller, grab, grab anything and just draw it. You know, I mean, everything has lighting, depth, color. You can learn from anything and that is seriously the truth and I, and I think people sometimes they dig too much into and it's my personal opinion I think people dig too much into what do I draw just draw draw for the sake of drawing and the other key to that is draw even when you're not inspired right so if you're sitting there and you just can't think of something to draw pick up a cup pick up anything and just draw it and it may get your brain going and it may get that creative flow going you know what I mean Right. Right. Yeah, Grim. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It is. It's 100% true. Like, there's days where I'm not like, okay, I want to do this. And I'm going to do a commission. And I'll just be kind of like, all right, got to get that brain going. But honestly, you just you just got to... It's like anything in life, right? Nobody wants to get up and exercise every day. Nobody wants to get up and have to make dinner, you know? But, like, we have to. And, and it, or it's sort of the same way. There's going to be some days where you're just not 100% ready but you just gotta you just gotta throw yourself into it what i do works for me yeah yep but yeah anyway thank you guys for, uh, for being here i appreciate all the questions all the follows all the support you guys are fantastic thank you very very much and the best way to get a hold of me if i'm not live is uh just hit me up on discord if any of you are interested, I'll drop my social links. I do have a uh, Instagram and a Twitter. I post all my art there. You will see everything there. I also have a YouTube where I do um, vector art tutorials. I do video editing tutorials. I do speed art. I do all kinds of stuff there. So um, if you guys want to follow me on those, feel free. No pressure. Uh, you can also follow me in the Discord where you will see basically chat going on amongst everyone. Um, and if you have any direct questions, you can message me there or you can just reach out to me there. Um, we share a lot of resources, so sometimes I'll take a drawing like this and I'll upload the editable Affinity file so you can actually tear it apart. You can see exactly how it was made. You can break down the layers, that kind of stuff, um, which is good for people that want to kind of just learn how the heck was this stuff made. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a fun, friendly place, and we have a lot of artists in there and people who are just, you know, willing to help each other out and learn and, and those kinds of things. Good stuff. Well, let me check here. Like John, he's over there on YouTube. He just, yep, he just posted his art in there under the work in production art. That looks great, John. Good job, buddy. Love the beard, man. The coloring? Heck yeah, dude. Yep. Yeah. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I think I need to probably get some sleep soonish. Let me see who's on that we could drop a host on if we were to drop this party. Let's see. Burgle's on. Who's on? Who's on? Who's on? Yeah, because I'm going to need to get some sleep here soon. But anyways, folks, I will find somebody to drop a host on. But thank you guys so much. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for everything. I really do appreciate each and every one of you being here. Um, if you guys do have any questions, reach out to me. Um, great to see you all. Nice to meet all the new people. Thank you. And, and normally... We had a lot of questions tonight. Normally we do a lot more drawing, but I, I welcome the questions. So don't don't mind at all. Um, but next time, feel free to come in. Ready? Good to see you, Grim. Glad I found you as well. Ceci, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, I will catch you guys. I will be live tomorrow during the day uh, because I don't work my normal job Mondays. I don't know the exact time yet, but I will be live. So you may see me on. Uh, if I don't see you until next time, take care. Be safe. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye.